Oh, hello. Hi there. Welcome, everybody, to our Games Mastering Workshop. I've got oh. guests with me. I've got LSP just up here, and Stacy the Linguist just down here, and our Mastercon. Hi. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, OBS is doing me a great big disservice. Um, I've shown LSP the issue I'm having. And I've never so seen dumb. that happen. It is <laughs> the dumbest. It is. It is. It is yeah. But OBS welcome, woke everybody. up and decided <laughs> Astacon needs to have a bad day. And I'm the one to handle that. Yeah. OBS yeah, chose sure. violence. <laughs> yeah, the o o OBS is choosing non-compliance. <laughs> 100%. Mm. So hi, mm. hello. We are here to in impart upon impart upon everyone how how to games master good or yeah. or dungeon master good or storytell good, etc. And that's why I've got these two amazing humans with me as well. Um, certainly for the start of the um, start of shenanigans today. So, um, getting into games mastery shenanigans. Um, oh yeah, that's that's also a thing. I'm just here to uh, eat full snacks, be... Astacon, and, and <laughs> yeah. to disrupt your show. That's right. I'm here to cause chaos. I am I am here for visual appeal only. Visual appeal. Only. Definitely bringing that to the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Calm down, snacks, my lord. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, and yes, I'll be I'll be stepping through how to um do some of the technical stuff on roll twenty as well. Um I'll use Dungeons and Dragons as an example, uh, because you've got some really cool compendium stuff in there that makes it a little a little easier to do. Um, oh yeah, and... it's juicy. Uh, OBS has given me enough grief, so I'm gonna do it easy with uh, easy with roll twenty. So yes, that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna get up to today. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, introduce. Um, if you've not met Stacy or LSP before, um, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Go ahead, or, snacks, ladies yeah, first. Yeah, why not? Um, well, I don't really know what to make of that, but my name <laughs> on uh, Zoom is Danny. Because that's my name in real life, but my name on uh, the internet is local snack preferences with like underscores between mm -hmm. the words. Just two little uh, underscores. It was not a very well thought out name. Uh, it doesn't fit on anything, but it's me. Uh, I yeah, yeah. very occasionally with no uh, fixed schedule stream, mostly illustration, but uh, when my GPU isn't being a bastard, I sometimes stream like Elite Dangerous and uh, Hades and stuff like that. Uh, that's me. I also am the dungeon master for a D&D uh, &D 5th edition game that has had four episodes on this channel. It is called Daybreak City Nights. It takes place in a uh, unique um, sort of synth wave 80s mixed with fantasy world and these two lovely people are also in that show it's kind of one of the best shows ever it's i'm not pretty, biased or anything good. it also gives me an excuse to wear a really gaudy hawaiian shirt which is great <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i just got elf ears for the show too by the way um, oh, excellent wonderful uh-huh strell is gonna be like a real elf now it's gonna be magical tremendous yeah. Um, Stacy, um, introduce yourself. Yeah. Please. Hi. Hello. My name is Stacy, and in case you didn't know, I'm a linguist. Uh, I got roped into streaming by a couple of these magical humans, uh, snacks included. Uh, peer pressured me into streaming, so I talk about linguistics as like a science. I mostly stream in science and technology, and talk about the wonders of, uh, of human language and how intricate and beautiful it is. But also, uh, I play monster problems sometimes because uh, <laughs> it's like the one game my computer can run. So. I also do a lot of mildly lewd things, um, but it's fine. It's tastefully. fine. Um, tastefully, tastefully. Uh, <laughs> I have also, so I've been uh, DMing for a while, uh, not really in an official capacity here on Twitch, but I have uh, my own campaign that I've been running for over a year, and I, I run an, a shit ton of one shots, um, like on and offline. So I have some experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. um in zoom since we're just doing this live would you 
maybe turn your volume down like yes 20, 20%. Oh, oh yes yeah, because your your volume's like all the way up from the um from your from other mic. previous mic yeah yep yeah. yep okay what about you okay. astakhan what about you who are you Tell what do you do you astakhan who is astakhan? hi hello turn it up I a little more astakhan yeah you can you can you can go up a, a touch in between, more. between those yeah in between in between yeah um, I can do that. I'm Astacon. You'll find me at twitch.tv slash Astacon, uh, Twitter Astacon TM, Instagram Astacon as well, and SoundCloud Astacon. Um, I mostly stream flying spaceships at the moment. I'm, I've got a couple of uh, uh, exploration ships that I'm testing against each other uh, on my own stream, but here on Adventure Tavern, uh, I have been running the Empire campaign that recently concluded. Uh, epic... <laughs> <laughs> epic uh, Dark Heresy 1 campaign where nobody died and I'm legitimately shocked at that. <laughs> it was uh, I wasn't a close I wasn't thing. I wasn't <laughs> actively <laughs> trying to kill people because that would be rude, but... <laughs> but I mean, the game kind of wants you to kill people, though. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's it a brutal, brutal system if you're unlucky. Um, and let me tell you just how lucky everyone was in that final <laughs> battle. My goodness, that <laughs> dice rolling. Um, but yeah, that's 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 what I do. Um, I am currently uh, in the process of planning a new campaign that you may or may not have seen the trailer for. Uh, Elite Dangerous role-playing game. Um, we are very close to nailing down the official start date, but start of September. Um, and yeah, that's also promising to be exciting. I have shenanigans. I have shenanigans planned. <laughs> Many shenanigans. <laughs> I believe we love you. shenanigans. You're gonna like tell oh, yeah. everybody that their ship crashes at the beginning of the first episode again? <laughs> yeah, is everyone gonna like just come in with absolutely no memory of who they are, <laughs> what life is? <laughs> I mean, I could do that, but I've already played that card. You see, yeah. mm -hmm. I've, already, I've already pulled you need that a, plot you need twist. a new you need a new Shyamalanian twist. Yes. So, um, um, I have a proposal yeah. for this, somewhat um, less structured stream and that is um if people have uh because the, the nice thing about this is that we can like read and react mm. to chat more than if we were yeah, like absolutely. actively role playing what yeah, would be sure. the best way for people to ask those questions so that we because a lot of times we'll be answering one and then yeah. another one's asked um, so we need to sort of curate them or not curate yeah, but just um, write them down yeah at, a, at adventure tavern i'll get the ping here and our mods can also collate them as well for us and throw them into uh, cast cool. live chat in case we miss any um and yeah. play it by ear i guess um sweet yeah. yeah so um yeah let's 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 do let's do because I've, I've actually made some notes and prep and stuff for this one <laughs> how rare um yeah games mastering um i think the best the best thing to uh, um to start off with regarding games mastering. I've sort of split it into like three sort of main fields here. The first one, and probably the most important, is fun. You're mm. a games master mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. have fun. Uh, the second <laughs> is collaboration. Um, you're there as a group to have fun. And lastly is detail, um, because you're gonna need some detail and stuff for your collaboration to have fun. So ultimately, it all, come, it all comes down to, you know, having having fun and enjoying yourself and stuff. Um, and that, that should be, like, the, the number one thing. The moment that stuff starts not being fun um, is, is where you have to start thinking okay why isn't this fun anymore what's going wrong where can i start adjusting things do i need to speak to people do i need to tell them to stop doing stuff do i need do we need to tell them to do stuff you know that that kind of thing that mm -hmm. that's i think probably the the single most important thing about like playing tabletop is you're there to yeah. enjoy yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean maybe... i have a 
please. Go ahead, Snacks. <laughs> no, I was just going to say. <laughs> you talk. Snacks, oh, stop it. Mic. No, Stacey, you go first. Um, I was going to say, made... I, um, you know, I don't have to share this story right now, but I do have a story kind of related to to that kind of like dealing with players and having to maybe like direct people, not just in game, but out of game too, as so just to like make the environment during the game more fun. Um, I'm happy to share that story either now or later. I don't know what you want structure wise. <laughs> um, give us the TLDR. Okay, uh, TLDR. Um, I had uh, a player who was uh, who was just like adamant on playing by the rules and was very much like a min maxer, uh, only playing for like the stats kind of a thing, and just did not want to be like a team player. Uh, he wanted like his character to just shine, um, and it, like got to the point where there was so much internal conflict between the group that we like just like the characters themselves just so much internal conflict that we had to just say hey dude you can't play with us anymore we had like so many like p uh like pc like combat with the players mm. fighting each other it was oh, a disaster goodness. yeah oh, it no. was it was crazy so i had to be like i'm sorry dude but you just you, this is not fun for anybody if we're just fighting each other <laughs> yeah so maybe an interesting line of, because uh, I think lots of us have had to have conversations like that. Maybe an interesting discussion it doesn't have to be the first thing, but we could talk about how do you avoid that? Nobody yeah, wants to have that conversation. That's on, that's on my notes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought about it. I never want to have that um, talk. Yeah. But you have yeah. To be, it's a it's a hard talk to have. Yeah. And I had to have like several conversations with him beforehand, but he just like mm. couldn't get it through his head. So like yeah. I ended up having to take it to the point where it's like, oh, I'm sorry you can't be included in the campaign anymore. Um yeah. but yeah, so there were a, like it's a really like a uh, really, really serious thing having to boot a player out. But it comes back yeah. to the point you're there to enjoy yourselves. You know, one is mm -hmm. there to enjoy oneself. If if one is not having fun you know, you need to have a, a think about why, what's going wrong, how can we fix it? And you've yeah. reminded me, actually, I didn't actually note this bit down, but the skills um, that you will gain and practice being a games master translate directly into sort of the professional world in people management, because... Mm -hmm. You're literally herding cats, trying to <laughs> pretend, trying to pretend you're slaying dragons and fighting aliens and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so you will, for sure, pick up people management skills whilst you're doing games mastery stuff. Um, and it's, it's, it's a fantastic skill set to have, 100%. Oh, excuse me. So it leads neatly, actually, into my next point. Um, one, one must always be professional about, um, stuff regarding, um, boundaries and the people that you're playing with. You do mm -hmm. not have to be professional about the game itself. <laughs> you're there to have <laughs> so fun. my reaction to it's, that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> like, yeah. What, do you? You have, to, you have to, yeah, yeah. You, you have to, yeah, regardless, yeah. you have to separate, like, the the out of character stuff with the in character stuff yes. that has to be mm -hmm. completely separate and you have to be professional yeah. about how you handle that you don't have to be yes. professional about ribbing the guy across the table from you for rolling like three <laughs> ones in a row <laughs> yeah. feel feel free to feel free to you know um to to enjoy your interactions but in terms of making sure that stuff that happens in the game isn't taken personally, you absolutely have to enforce those boundaries. Um, yeah. Most people will will grasp that quite, quite easily and readily. Um, some people, either through naivety, malice, or just not having the experience, um, will take guidance. Um, try to be patient with them. <laughs> when when that does happen and and hopping back to what Stacy said regarding having to talk to this problem player more than once before booting them out of the game um that's the 100% a thing that you 
as a as a game as a as a games master will will need to do um, is if someone is causing bother, deal with it as soon as possible, as professionally as possible. Um, yeah. There's there's like a surprising amount of external communication when it comes mm. to D and D. Like a lot of people, especially if you do watch a lot of D and D content, you see everybody gathered together. They all have fun. Life is great, and then you know stuff is stuff is done. Um, but it's really important to have those conversations about boundaries. Talk to people if they are mm. causing issues outside um, outside of the game as well. Um, even when that comes to like talking about character stuff like even that like there's so many conversations that that people shouldn't be scared to have outside of the game yeah. um that kind of need to happen for the game itself to be fun mm, absolutely um snacks do you have anything um on that particular point uh specifically on on um dealing with the problem when it arises or more how um, to not get there in the first place both both are good I mean, I think that there is a lot that can be said about conflict management. Um, there are books written about it, and it's probably outside of our scope. But yeah, I guess yeah. looking at it that way in saying, like, this is a conflict. We are not seeing things the same way. What is the goal here? I want to have an interaction with this person. And the goal is to go away from the conversation with us seeing things more the same way and either them changing their behavior or peacefully leaving the game yeah and maybe understanding why uh so i think that is it, you know once you've gotten to that point that's kind of what it is I, to me it's more uh about describing as clearly as you can what kind of game you want to play because mm -hmm. like you've said there's a, there's a totally a place for i just want to make a good character in the rules that like maximizes their ability to kill monsters and not die i'm not interested yeah. in speaking with an accent and trying to seduce <laughs> a tavern goer unless it's via my <laughs> charisma bonus and i'm rolling for it you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah it's totally yeah, yeah. valid to also say there might not be any conflict in this campaign you know what i mean but fine you just got to talk about what the game is going to be like mm. Yeah. And I like even even as the game progresses, uh, if you're I mean, if you're running like one shots, it's a completely different story. But like um, if you're planning on doing your own campaign, I think it's important to kind of continue having those discussions. If you feel like the campaign needs a change of pace, if maybe you want to do like more RP heavy, like have more RP heavy sections and then have more like heavy combat sections to kind of appease everybody. Um, but like constantly checking in with people, especially during a campaign is, is kind of important to make sure that you're all still on the same page and enjoying and having yep. fun yeah um comes comes back to open and honest communication um mm -hmm. which as a group of humans you have to you have to do pretty often to make sure that you understand how people are feeling if they've got any concerns rather than let it fester and that turn into problems um by having the ability uh, and, you know, encouraging um, your players to talk to each other and to, to you as a games master um, to air their concerns as, as, as uh, soon as able and professionally as possible um, it is a great way to help head off problematic behavior before it becomes a problem. Um, I think to that point, too, um, it's not just a, an avoiding negatives. You, hmm. if you have like candid out of character conversations with the people who are in your game, they can bring up stuff that'll make it better and more fun or easier for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, there's sure. a lot of that that can happen. It's it's um, oh, uh, so actually Baron's uh, questions that he just put in chat are mm. great. Like. Yeah. How are, are you enjoying the combat level? That's a great way because some people yeah. might think this is too easy. Some people might yeah, think, yeah. I really don't want my character to die. Could you tone it down a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. More narrative. How does the story feel? Does it make sense? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
You have a good yeah. GM. Yeah, oh, that's great. Like, BVB. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good GM. That's a really good GM yeah. for sure. Cute, cute, kudos to your uh, your GM there. There was another thing that you said <laughs> a little earlier. Where is it? Um, oh yeah. Uh, also, be aware as a player uh, how much the GM is letting the problem player get away with in game. I just wanted to highlight that real quick because that was really, I thought, I thought really good kind of thing, and I didn't want to interrupt you guys uh, whilst yeah, you were mid-flow. Yeah, no, it's okay. At <laughs> um, that point, you should never be made to feel uncomfortable at a role-playing table. Yeah. Um, sometimes, on accident, things can cross a line, and then, yeah. you know, it's, it's sort of up to you whether you want to say, hey, that's okay, just do But in general, I think there's this idea, I think it's going away, hopefully, as the tabletop RPG community becomes a little bit more aware of mm. being humans. Um, but <laughs> I think there's sort of an expectation that like, if a player does something and the GM does it, and a D GM is okay with it, that like, even if it makes you uncomfortable, that's like a you problem as a as a player. And that's mm. not the case. Yeah. Um, no, no. And yeah, the good thing I think is that there are absolutely tables available now where people will respect boundaries, listen yeah. to what does or doesn't make you comfortable mm -hmm. or what you're looking for in a game. So yeah. you should never stick with a, a game where you are made to feel unsafe, uncomfortable, anything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lily, Lily, the GM, has got a fantastic... I was going to say, um, yeah, she said it perfectly. That, yeah, the characters can feel uncomfortable. The players never should. Um, yeah. And, and if you don't yeah. mind my interjecting, just as sure. uh, just as a as a female person uh, who plays D&D &D, uh, and has played with um, with some groups of people who are maybe on the older side and on the male side. <laughs> on the male side um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if you do feel uncomfortable, I like I know that I have been in a couple of D and D situations where I have felt uncomfortable, and and I haven't necessarily felt comfortable with the people around me to say it to like voice that comfortability. And mm. I just want to tell everyone out there, it's okay to just leave. It's okay to just leave. You don't owe anybody anything. Yeah. Um, if you do find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, like by all means, leave. Like. Uh, I was, if I, if I'll just share a brief story. I was playing uh, a session with some, some acquaintances at a bar and I was put, uh, my character was put in like a sexual situation, but we had never established how that was going to be handled. We had never talked about that. And suddenly the DM like put my character in a sexual situation and I was thrown off. I was like, so I, I didn't know what to do. Um, and I, I didn't leave uh, right after that. I did end up leaving the group eventually. Um, but like, it was one of those situations that wasn't good and I should have mm. left. And so I'm kind of saying this to myself and to everyone else, like, that's not okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not okay for a, for a GM to, to put you in a situation like that where you're going to feel yeah. uncomfortable as a, as and stuff GM, like that hasn't been don't established. Don't do that to your players. Don't do that. <laughs> do <not. laughs> don't do that. <laughs> well, and a resource Talk about for those a topics way. in advance. Yeah, a, a resource for a way not to do that is um, we use, there's a uh, resource, it's a PDF called Consent in Gaming. Yes. Um, and um. that's great because as you're planning a campaign, it's hard to think of everything that may be a serious yep. issue for people and who people would really, yeah. your players may not want to be involved. And so off the bat, that thing's great because it, mm -hmm. you know, Contains has a lot just of about every every, yeah. every everything that could be triggering to to somebody, uh, and that leads neatly into my next point. <laughs> get right consent for content. And Sarah's questions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, get consent for content before starting. Um, yeah. As as then, Lily the can, G like, GM I would say... mentioned. Um, yeah. Uh, that's why a session zero isn't just a good idea. It's necessary. You need to have that discussion with your with your players and with the players amongst themselves, so that they know what red lines there are and what things should be approached more cautiously. For example, somebody might be scared of feathers. 
that's a thing. <laughs> that is mm-hmm. a thing. Um, and they might be terrified enough that even just the mention of it sets them sets them off in a cold sweat. That could be a red line for that particular player. Um, do not approach peculiar issues, peculiar um, uh, uh, triggers. Topics. You know, yeah. mockingly. As a, as a GM, approach them professionally. Do not giggle. As peculiar as it might be to your normie brain, that that player has a real problem with that item. You know, be sympathetic. Um, mm. I, don't, I don't know if there are any normies on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> normies? Normies where? <laughs> right. I, don't, I do not know her. a normie? <laughs> I'll say, uh, yeah. I think a super helpful... Um, thing that I am planning to uh, instill for our uh, next session that I run, Mm -hmm. especially, I think this would be true if uh, you're playing around the table, but I think it's especially true if you're playing live. Uh, Yeah. Have a way for people to, like, communicate, like, continued or not continued consent yeah. without having to sort of do something visually or interrupt the story. Yeah. You know, I, I think uh, as simple as, you know, direct message me mm. or uh, a red yeah. X or put it in, you know, whatever the chat yeah, is. We've, we've got a, we've got a cast live chat um, mm-hmm. for adventure tavern shows that we use um, for like behind the scenes communication. Um, and it's, it's used, you know, for, for all kinds of stuff that doesn't need to be said live. Um, and that can translate also to a, a tabletop situation with text messages or WhatsApp or Signal or whatever mm-hmm. as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, Having that, if, like, if constant necessary. flow of, like, yeah. consent yeah. is really mm-hmm. important. It's really important. Yeah. Even if you don't, you know, have your phones at the table, which mm. I know some some uh, DMs who make that a rule. Like you come play the game, you have to put your phone in a basket, and I'm putting it in the kitchen or something like that. <laughs> um, I'm not that strict, <laughs> but uh, I think to even say like any time, like like have a very um, easy to say thing that we've you've agreed will will interrupt mm. things and let you sort of reset. Like I just need I need to take a minute or something like that. Like. Can yeah. we take? Yeah. Can we take a break? Some yeah. some yeah. phrase like that that will let you say, "Oh, okay, yes." It, the answer always sh- has to be yes, and you have to be okay with that as the DM. And then um, take a step back and see how, what the best way is to continue the story, but not in the way that was uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, having um, oh man, stream of brain just hit then. Consent, yo. It's very important. <laughs> Make sure you do it. Carry on, guys. I yeah. forgot what I was going to yeah. say. And like, I would, I would even say, so like, being a being a GM is is kind of an interesting position to be in, especially if you're getting like together with a group of friends, uh, because you still like love your friends, you want to have fun with your friends, but you mm. do have to kind of come from a place of professionalism. You kind of have to yeah. be able to, you know, put on this uh, put on this air of professionalism and say, look, I I'm kind of in charge of running this, and so we need to like make sure things are great. Like I know yes. we're friends, but there there's there's like a, a I, I kind of like put on a DM like cloak or whatever you know just like metaphorically <laughs> whenever i get into whenever i get into like dungeons and dragons mode because you kind of yeah. you kind of have to have that just for everyone yeah, for to sure. be comfortable and to have fun so sometimes yeah, your friendships with people might need to be put on the back burner for, yeah. for the sake of the um, fun and don't be scared also to call people out on bullshit if there's mm-hmm. most of the time in my experience, it's unintentional. <laughs> it's very rare you'll get like an actual shitlord come to your table um, with the intent of disrupting me. things. <laughs> with the intent of disrupting things. Well, no, actually, no, that covers you as well, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, you're disrupting things negatively, not not in not narratively disrupting. 
um, like uh, say Amy and and LSP are absolutely great at, and I'm I'm here for it 100. percent You know, narrative chaos gremlins. Yes, please give me more of that. It keeps me on my toes, and it's it's hilarious. Um, but um, but yeah, um, sure. Uh, I, I haven't got a good segue into my next point now. Um, oh well, but the next, the next <laughs> Let's point. Let's say is, this: okay. there is more that could be said about this. It's a really important yeah. conversation yes. that I think the yeah, whole sure. TTRPG community is sort of in the process of having. Um, yeah, and it's always absolutely. welcome to um, continue to discuss in our Discord if you have thoughts. Yeah, abs mm -hmm. absolutely! Exclamation point Discord. You can you can check out um, check out the resources we have on offer. Um, we will share that consent PDF, by the way, um, after the session, after this is done. Um, we'll pop it in Discord for you so that you guys, uh, everyone can download it, share it with um, your players. If you're in a game, you can present it to your games master and say, hey, I found this really mm -hmm. cool thing on the interweb nets. Let's give it a go. Yeah, um, ooh, and if they're a good ooh, GM, ooh. they'll be like, yeah, let's yeah. do. Oh, hey, this, this is a good segue. Be yeah, available. segues! Yeah, be available and approachable for collaboration mm -hmm. is next big tip. And this, this is, applies to you personally as a games master. Um, you need to be um, an approachable person so that when a player has an issue... Um, not just with rules or with role play or with, with other people, um, or you know, an issue with um, uh, life getting in the way is a great example. The final boss yeah. of TTRPGs is always scheduling, um, <laughs> and being there for your players when they have a problem when it gets related to. Um, uh, the, the the tabletop um, is is a hugely important enabler of all the points we've covered so far. Particularly particularly the the the, the ones you've got to be really careful about, like um, consent boundaries and, and stuff. But also professionalism and having fun. Um, you know, going going back to the number one reason, the 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 the, the big thing, fun in in big. Big writing. Um, With an exclamation mark. Oh, yeah. And, and maybe a <laughs> trademark. Maybe a trademark as well. Um, okay, so we've got a, got a question from chat. As a player, uh, I am sometimes anxious about stepping on the DM's toes flow. If a scenario arises, I think I may have overstepped. Would, in your experience, rather be addressed in the moment or after the session? Uh, both... I'm personally, yeah. um, I can't, yeah, it, it's, it's a difficult, that's a really, it's a cracking question that, it's a really difficult one. Um, so. I think there are a couple ways to, to approach it, yeah. and it kind of depends on the, the medium of the game you're in, right? Uh, if you're playing online, it's pretty easy to, like, send someone a DM and be like, hey, like, we need to talk about this. Yeah. Um, if it's in real life, then it's a little bit of a different story. Um, yeah, it, but... it, it would depend how serious as well that particular problem is. Um, yeah. So, so don't feel too obliged to remain meek for the sake of somebody else's flow and toes. If 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 something is serious enough that you have you feel as though you have to step on toes, step on toes. Yeah, um, by all means, up. and a good GM will appreciate that you stepped yeah. on their toes to to talk about that point or mm. to redirect the situation. Yeah, it's 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 different when when we're doing a live show. Um, most of the time, we'll we'll be communicating in the background as well, and before and after. Um, we'll have discussions and stuff to going back to be available and approachable for collaboration and communication, going back to boundaries, professionalism and fun again. It's, it's all feeding, all feeding along this, um, this related sphere of GM 
tips, I guess. Yeah. Or sounded um, better in my head. <laughs> there were a couple ahead, other Snacks. chat questions. Were you planning mm. to go back? Because there was there were a few that I think were before that, but maybe you're going to okay. go get to them as they line um, up with your plan. Uh, yeah. There was the, one. Um, the the combat one I'll cover one. a little later. Okay. Um, was there was there another? Because I've I've got uh, the two um, in cast live. Ooh. Yeah, if you if I you just chuck it in. Monitoring my own thing that I said was a good idea to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just chuck it in there. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah. Um. Uh, are there any additional rules tips for GMing on Twitch rather than offline? Oh, that's an interesting one. Completely different animal. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. We we could I could do myself like five hours of stream just discussing that. Um <laughs> We'll get back to that one, I think. Uh because that's a that's a that's a big one. Uh if a player needs to leave the group for any reason, how as a GM would you work to fit that into a plan? Um mm. That would depend on on your plot. That would depend on the game you're playing. That would depend on um, uh, why the the player had to leave uh, as well. Um, a great I, example. I have a couple examples. If yeah. uh, you can go ahead and share yeah, your examples, because I have yeah, a couple that, too. <laughs> um, during during Empire, we had some we had some guest characters to cover occasional absences uh, and real life stuff getting in the way with with uh, with our usual cast. Um, and how I did that narratively is the group had a, a shuttle that they used to, to fly around the planet with. Um, and the, the characters, um, when we built them uh, as, uh, with, with, the, with the guest cast, um, we made sure that they were uh, able to assist in the background. Um, so that they could be there narratively, but didn't have to be like center stage, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, it would depend a lot on it would depend a lot on the particulars. Stacy, uh, your example. Yeah, so I have a I have a couple examples. One I wasn't directly involved in, but I think the the DM handled it super well. Um, okay. The player had uh, was was moving, and that, since it was in like an IRL game, they didn't want to. This was way before uh, all of the 2020 <laughs> madness. Uh, yeah, and so yeah. they decided to just kind of be done with the campaign. And so uh, their character kind of had a little bit of a story arc, but this move kind of came up. Um, and so the DM kind of like planned, I would say a good chunk of this session to kind of like wrap up the character, mm. uh, give him a bit of resolution. And, and, and the character did like die, but like in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the yeah. circumstances made it so they like killed off the character, but um, yep. but there there was there was still some like character resolution in the in the in the more negative on the other side on the more negative side if you have to like pick someone out um, there's there's fun narrative ways to handle that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whoops, I think well, everybody uh, dies. My well, the, the the player that I ended up having to excuse, um, like nobody, like everyone was kind of glad to see them go because he was really intruding on the whole fun mm. of the game, um, and so to kind of like bring the fun back, uh, we ended up like there ended up being like a wanted poster for him somewhere or something, <laughs> um, <laughs> and they like got to make a few bucks off of like turning him into the authorities. Nice, um, <laughs> nice. I like kind it. of like turning it back. Yeah, so yeah, uh, like there's there's a bunch of like fun narrative ways that you can, you know, have people popping in and out or give people kind of that resolution mm. um, or if you need to bring the fun back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. There's, there's, there's a ton of, there's a ton of ways. Um, there, there's for sure not a one size fits all for, for that particular one. Um, so I'll say uh, um, just really quickly on that topic. I had to leave a uh, tabletop RPG with D and D campaign, um, and I think that if, I guess it just goes back to like there should be open out of character communication between players mm. and the and the game runner. I talked to the guy who's running our game, said, I'm going to have to leave on this date. Um, 
these are sort of the ideas that I have about how it could happen, or you you know tell me what you think. And it wound up mm. being kind of fun because um, the GM and I knew it was going to happen, but the rest of the party didn't. And I wound up in character for in character reasons, stealing items from the party and <laughs> running away, so that my character could become a uh, potentially either a villain or they could mm. you know resolve that uh, in different ways. Um, so I think it can add to a story if you do it yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, it really can. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just call out my my old GM, my ve my my first GM, who the git. Um, <laughs> a one one character had to one player had to leave due to IRL commitments, um, and so we wrote their character out. Um, you know, turning into a psyker, getting shipped away. Um, and, you know, to get sanctioned and, and all of that nonsense. And they got canonized as a saint. Great, fantastic. This, the dude was a redemptionist. <laughs> if you know 40k law, you know that redemptionists are firebrand extremists. Loved every second of it. The, the, the next half of the campaign, none of us twigged. It, it was a setup that our saint was now the big bad evil guy and we had to defeat them in the final battle and the player came back and nearly killed all of us <laughs> That's good cool. lord yeah i think yeah. i think that, that, that great. speaks to a general principle and you're, you're gonna get into this with collaborating um mm. i'm sure but um it's not bad to sort of write a linear story um, that's an okay thing to do as yeah. a game master. But if you're smart, you'll be open to changing it and willing yes. to listen and totally yeah. pivot in big ways. Um, mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. one kind of comes with experience in terms of like how yeah. much you should change. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that one you that's... just kind of have to fill out and practice. Yeah, that's in that's in my detail part. <laughs> that's in my detail part, that is. <laughs> um... So, um, just a general one on preferences. Do you guys prefer in-person or online campaigns? I've never played tabletop in person. I've played tabletop for like 12 years. I've GM'd for eight. <laughs> I've never once done it in person. Um, so I'm the worst person to ask. Uh, I... I've done... Both. I haven't DM'd uh, in real life, although I would absolutely love to, and I'm I'm trying mm. to get like my roommates in on that. Um, uh -huh. I would absolutely love to. Um, but I, I as a player, love playing IRL. It just feels mm. more tangible, more visceral. Um, I feel like I can express myself better. Yeah. Um, but uh, like being online definitely has a lot of a lot more options a lot more ways mm -hmm. to communicate with your players yeah uh, and have a little bit more of that collaboration uh, mm. when you have a platform like discord or something yeah, yeah. um so yeah, I, it's, I it's love also both. That's different from running a show as well doing mm -hmm. a show um lily the gm mentioned it very briefly in chat and i just want to pull back to that real quick um is like having an extra player an extra silent player at the table that you need to keep invested and entertained and you're much more into the um the role playing with a show than than you probably would be uh, amongst friends either online or or irl um lsp do you have a particular preference yeah i um i don't consider streaming a live show to really be even in the same category of fun um for me the fun in that is almost like putting on a theater production or something mm. where mm -hmm. um you're you're sort of investing a lot more energy into it uh, and it's going to tire you out a lot more. Um, there's more intensity, but in the same way for me, like I, I find that more, a very intense experience, um, with, you know, that's cool in some ways and also stressful in some ways. Um, yeah, not all, yeah. not always bad stress, but, um, I think it's awesome that it's possible to play with roll 20 and other tools like that. 
um, tabletop RPGs online because you can connect with people who want to play the same game as you. Yeah. Um, and who you know, uh, you know, you just have such a much broader group to potentially get together with. Yeah, um, absolutely. There, there are so many tools with it. Um, I like and miss playing offline, but those are to me normally more like of a get together hangout than focused on the game. I think mm. normally if I'm playing, if I play the online game, it would be like, we're going to show up, maybe chat, but then we're going to get into our game that we're playing together. Whereas um, I have played hosted games at my house with my friends where um, it's like, hey, come over at 2 p.m. And then it's like 4 p.m. And it's like, should we start? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's very much right. more like a, a social, a social call. Yeah. That, and yeah. You, food involved which food is kind of and fun. drink and mm -hmm. yeah all that it's, fun it's, stuff it's, it's, which it's is all, great it's again different. yeah it's just a different it's just a different yeah. mood it's a different mood yeah 100 percent um cool so i'm gonna i'm gonna pivot from that sort of area in into now detail because we've 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 done a lot of fun slash collaboration um detail in terms of how to write, present, um, organize, that kind of thing. Um, I'll start, I'll start with my own experiences. Um, my, my, my number one thing regarding like, uh, detail and storytelling is, uh, for me personally, I cannot plan in a huge amount of detail. Um, because simply the moment that plan goes anywhere near the players, it will fall apart. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. I mean, did did you did you see um, in Empire the the shenanigans that were in thrust upon me by that party? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had to. Um, I, I my planning was only at the strategic level. If you've done any systems analysis before, um, boring university subject, but super useful. Um, strategic is like broad stroke stuff. You've got tactical and then operational underneath. Operational is like your game to game stuff. You can't really plan that much except for the immediate game ahead. Um, at the tactical level, you can work on some of your story arcs and things and keep your characters, uh, NPCs I should say, uh, lurking about ready to throw in and stuff. And at the strategic level is the campaign. Um, that's where, for me, I spend most of my effort in terms of planning and prep, because I know for a fact, um, and I know for a fact because I, I've made the mistake of over-planning at, at the lower levels of detail, um, closer to the game itself, and then having to throw all of that effort out when everything goes, you know, completely left field. Um, there are others who m plan so meticulously uh, that that is not an issue for them. Um, I can't operate like that. <laughs> that's not how my brain works. Um, I don't so know that. I don't know that that's the way any of us work. I don't think because I'm kind of like I'm kind of like you too, where I'm like, yeah, there's an there's an end game that I have in mind, um, mm -hmm. and there are certain things that I want to happen along the way. But the stuff in the middle kind of just has to happen. Like when you're so, like I said, I've been running this campaign for over a year now. Mm. Um, if that tells you how the end game's going, <laughs> we're working on it. Um, yep, yep. But sometimes, you know, it's uh, it's part of the, part of the journey too. Um, yes. And like even when I'm planning a one shot, I kind of just go into it with like a good hook and then mm. like a key a key conflict element. And yep. I call it good. Um, not to spoil my most recent, uh, my most recent one shot that I did, but it was based off of just like a hook from a TV show that I saw, and I was like, "This is like a good episode mm. hook. I can work with this." Um, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. And then the character, like, players will just take it wherever. Um, and I'd say, like, if you've had any experience as like a teacher you'll know exactly what it's like to be a DM because it's the same thing. You can plan as much as you want, but as soon mm. as you're like in real life, things are happening, like stuff is happening, it's going to be different. You got to yeah. be able to be flexible about that. 
Yeah, uh, LSP, I see you're doing some behind the scenes stuff there. Um, thank you for that, <laughs> by the way. Um, sure. How 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 about you? How how do you go about like your your planning and stuff? Um, it's uh, it's interesting because I tend to let plans run away with me. So, for instance, <laughs> J Racy <laughs> Nights is a one shot, <laughs> and then it's um, not. Yeah, it's a one shot. And then yeah. it's not one shot. <laughs> uh, a one shot that just keeps shooting. <laughs> I think the big thing is to have a mixture of specific plans and modular plans. By modular, I mean things that can be plugged in and have Ooh, some yeah, level of being really generic to them. That. Yeah, yeah. I think if everything is modular, player choice doesn't matter. Because if no matter where you go, I'm going to give you the same... Uh, NPC or the mm. same whatever. Yeah. Um, to me, I mean, you could do that and still maintain the illusion of choice, but I would have no capacity to be surprised by what my players yeah. do. And I would like yeah, yeah. for them, when they do things out of the box, mm. for it to be... So sometimes you absolutely need a detailed character with a name and a motive that can be yeah. plugged in somewhere. Yeah. That's the, that's the reason you create those because you could absolutely improvise a character. Sometimes yeah. you do need to entirely improvise something and that's also mm -hmm. fine. It's not the end yeah. of the world if you do that. That can be sometimes some of the funnest stuff because when you're making something up, your brain might make really surprising, fun <laughs> choices that you would have mm -hmm. filtered out otherwise, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But so 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 I think that the a really good approach is to say I'm going to have some situations, some encounters. Those could be like social or mm. combat. Um, yep. <laughs> some places and some characters that have uh, that have their own detail built into them, but which I do not put into the campaign ahead of time. Yeah. They're sort of yeah. ready. Um, yeah, that's because yeah, that's, yeah. Um... One that that one now that you've mentioned that kind of uh prep, you've made me realize I did a lot of that for Empire. Um, mm -hmm. the 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 core like strategic um spoil Empire spoilers coming up. Um, the core strategic uh thing is to fight off the alien invasion, but first you have to like learn about it and you ha then you have to prep um mm -hmm. uh that that was like that was like the 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 strategic level and i had that like in my mind that was that was how the plot was almost certainly going to go um and th th that's where i did most of my prep but i did similarly to you i had a i i, I showed it last week i can't set it up properly uh, to show everyone today because OBS is being a butt and it won't let me um, so uh, I had a, a spreadsheet with NPCs in it and I had like a hundred pre-generated names and appearances that um, I could use at any moment I also had a selection of like six or seven stat lines, character stat mm. lines, that I could pick out and apply to one of those names the moment I needed um, the NPC that Finny was interacting with that she inevitably asked the name for. <laughs> 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 that I could, I could run with. The important NPCs of the campaign, like uh, Bralia, the High King, Bralia's husband, I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, um, Sheila, um the um the the two pompous um guys from blackhold i can't remember their names either because uh, there was literally <laughs> like a hundred npcs i was keeping a track track of in that campaign it got quite it got quite quite a big list um and um those all of those characters they were um they were prepared ahead of time um, because they were important plot um, driving um, characters, there was the possibility that none of them would have been used in particular. 
Um, so, for example, the um, if the, if the group hadn't gone to Black Hole, um, the High King, the the um, the Seneschal, and the um, uh, the other the other chap um, wouldn't have been used. Um, and I, I would have just rolled with the story um, from that. I had them ready, and if I didn't use them then, I could use them in a later campaign. Um, so the, the prep you do that you don't use immediately is available to you for later. Yeah. That's good. Plan your big boys. There's yeah. ways to get smaller NPCs. I'll, I'll actually, I have a really good, like, NPC generator that I use if I ever just need a character. Ooh. And you can filter yeah. it by, like, D&D race, gender, mm. profession, yeah. is uh, it, whatever. Is it, and you the, just, do, like, is it the donjon generator, perchance? No, it's a different one. I think okay. it's a different one. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's a different one. Uh, and I like it because it, yeah. it gives some little crunchy yeah. stuff with it. Um, oh, nice. That uh, reminds me, I still yeah. need to, on, because on that... I've been busy and um, stuff, I still need to share my NPC sheet. Thank you for reminding me about that. You're about to dip, though, aren't you? Yeah. Mm. I am about to dip. I was going to just like, sorry to interrupt, but I do have to go. No, no, it's, okay. um, it's been yes. so lovely chatting with you, Asticon, Snacks, my, my friends, and everyone in chat. Thanks, thanks to everyone for being here. You're all amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy, like, I'm always on the, the Adventure Tavern Discord. Yep. So if you want yeah. to continue the discussion, I am here for it because uh, D&D is life. <laughs> Thank you very anyway, much. Thank you. thank you all so much. Uh, yes. See you later. <laughs> shall we? Um, shall we take a break uh, at this at this point for five? Because I've got to turn my overhead light on. As you can see, it's gotten dark, and I've got it, has. it really has. <laughs> I thought that uh, I thought that when Stacey left, it was going to break our overlay, but it's actually no, not no, no. It's broken. it's actually yeah. That's 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 why I that's why I did the overlay as it is. Um. So so yeah. Let's take let's take a break. Do you need long for for break? Ah, I'm good. I'm just gonna fill up my water and okay. Yeah. Be right so back, we'll, so. we'll take yeah, a break we'll for like just five, a couple minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Very Ooh. fairly quick for 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 breaks as as we go. Um. So get up. Have a stretch, look at something far away, take your meds if you have forgotten to do so. I've just remembered I've forgotten to take mine. There you <laughs> if go. you're wearing a binder, take a few breaths. Um, look at something and... far away. Relax the yes. tension in your temples and in between your eyes. Drop your shoulders. Unclench your jaw. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> looked up to the stars. One day, I hope to fly among them. Thank you. 
Oh, hi, hello. Welcome back. LSP has uh, got to take care of his pet rabbit puppy um, for a few mins. Um, so I'm going to solo for a, for a short time. Um, so, uh, yes, I'll answer. I'll answer a couple more of the more of the questions. Um, uh, social encounters. Ooh, yeah, I can. I can. I can have a chat about that as well. Um, I could do that actually whilst I'm uh, going through the roll twenty setup, um, which is a thing I had a specific request for. So it's one one thing I'd like to you know cover as a as a particular doofer. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna pop that in here so that I don't forget. Um, so yes, questions. The first question um, that I'll cover here. Um, I won't do. I won't do Taco's combat question. I'd rather have LSP here for that one because he's better with Dungeons and Dragons than I am. Um, but in terms of how do you feel about the Lando Cal Calrissian tactic, players being able to say, "Oh, I know a guy," introducing them as an NPC for the DM to fill in potentially fix a problem, as long as it fits with the backstory. Depends on your campaign and the NP and, and the player character. Um, it's it's totally a thing that you could do. Um, when I was when I was running with Empire, um, there was a lot of a lot of scope for the characters to invent. Uh, so the players to invent store uh, backstory for their characters whilst the game progressed. Um, Empire spoiler again. A big part of, of the of the Empire campaign was the um, uh, the fact that the, the the characters weren't allowed the players sorry weren't allowed to make backstories or even choose a name for their characters at the start of of the campaign. It's, it's a big big plot point about why they can't remember anything. Um, and I, I won't go into the whys and hows, just in case you guys want to watch it. But um, having the, char the the players be able to say, "Oh yeah, there's Hinto," to use Finny's character, uh, Finny's um, acquaintance um, from from my character's past uh, that I. I could call upon or, or what have you. Uh, Dark Heresy has rules for contacts and stuff. Um, I wasn't too precious as a games master uh, about the um, the players, uh, the character, yeah, the players inventing um, NPCs that they would have interacted with in the past because it gave me decent plot hooks for their characters. Um, and it also gave me an opportunity to... The entire Happening of Empire was a simulator. <laughs> One of the many possible, many possible futures the Infinity Circuit worked out, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, it, it depends entirely on the situation, the campaign, and the player. Uh, and, and their character. If it would give them an, an, an immediate mechanical advantage, I would be considerably more strict about what they were allowed to pull out of the hat. Um, especially like on livestream, a, uh, a thing that we go by is yes and. Um, it's, it's a performance thing. Um, and only very rarely have I had, have I had cause to say, ah, but no, can't get away with that particular one. Um, but but yes and is essentially building upon what the other people are saying. It goes back into collaboration somewhat. Um, and it lets the players get invested in building in building their characters up as well. And why they um, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and it, it also gives the, the the players a bit of agency in the story writing um, as well. Because as, as a games master, you're not the only person writing the story. Um, the players are the main characters. <laughs> as the games master, you're the only you're, you're only there to provide 
an arena for those characters. And that, that's really important that you've got to get your, uh, as, as a GM, get your head around is, um, I, I, I didn't say it in so many words, uh, but you have to put your ego aside. As a games master, you are not the center of attention. You are the sound engineer. You are making everybody else look great. That is your job. Um... <laughs> the Felion, right? Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a joint effort. It goes back into collaboration. That's why having the out-of-character discussions is super important, because then you can say, Hey, uh, other player, uh, my character is thinking about doing this with your character. Are you cool with that? Cracking example. Um, or, um, hey, Games Master, um, my character's thinking about pulling this from their backstory. Is this legit? Um, and, and you'll notice, um, quite, quite, especially in the earlier episodes, once the cast were finding their feet, because some of them have never played tabletop before. Um, about, am I allowed to do a thing? For example, you know, yeah, cle clearing up with me. Once once everyone got into their stride more, um, it was more, um, more flowing. But certainly, initially, uh, there, was, there, there was a lot of, you know, querying about, um... <laughs> GM isn't the hand of, uh, hand of the gods, I will say, because, you know, Dungeons and Dragons tends to have pantheons, but sometimes work on their behalves. Yeah, for sure. Chaos Gods would play TTRPGs, Sinch would have fun in playing Finny. My goals are beyond anyone's understanding, including my own. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, I, I use Empire a lot as an example because that's the most recent campaign I've run. It's fresh in my head. I can... Hi, MSP! Um, I can okay. draw, from, draw from that fairly easily. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that goes into the, into the Lando uh, Calrissian question. Um, LSP, uh, combat balancing. You're probably mm -hmm. better equipped to answer that than me from a Dungeons & Dragons perspective. I can give general advice, but in terms of, like, um, D&D specifically, uh, mm. you're, you're better qualified. So I'd like, if you're okay with it, um, for, for you to lead. Sure. I, I mean, disclaimer, I'm not an expert on this there are people with so many more yeah. hours behind the screen um i do think my my opinion on balancing combat is that it is much less important for combat to be balanced than for combat to be creative and exciting yeah um it feels like like i, I want i want it to be memorable yes right Sometimes, sometimes it, combat is memorable because it's a nail biter, and that's what happens when you nail the balance. When you get the yeah. balance exactly right, it'll be a thing that the players are really thinking through strategically, mm -hmm. and it'll be close if you play well as a DM and make you know smart tactical decisions too. That's fun, but it's not the only flavor of fun. Um, sometimes it's just the fact that there's a really fraught social thing happening and like you're in this fight and there's a conversation happening between you know punches uh or something mm -hmm. um sometimes it's the stakes sometimes it's the uh fact that the terrain is really weird or the or the uh you know, there's something really unexpected or creative yeah. about the um people you're fighting or creatures you're fighting against yeah i will absolutely. say in terms of balancing um combat rating people have been a um, dm and dnd they know that there is supposedly a number associated with each monster which equals yes. how, how many challenge rating isn't it yes. it's like a love if you if a monster should be fair for level four a party of four level four characters it has a challenge rating of four if it's for level seven characters it's a challenge rating of seven um yeah. it it's a yardstick right from more than mm. gospel yeah i think i think in dungeons and dragons it's really more about how many actions 
uh, and attacks the enemies get per round. Like a really okay. one really difficult enemy that can do a lot of damage, but only gets two attacks per round is often going to be much more easy than like nine crappy goblins. <laughs> um, because yeah. Dungeons and Dragons is built so that there is a pretty wide range of outcomes for any single mm. attack. So when yeah. I balance, you start with the challenge rating, but you recognize that like the number of enemies, like more enemies, mm. you know, even if it's broken down into small challenge rating creatures is always, yes. almost always harder. The trade-off, one thing that you can do if you want to make a, this is, I think I got this idea from Matt Colville. Everybody should watch Matt Colville for Dungeons and Dragons resources. But, um, if you want to create like a wild, unexpected boss encounter, you can make a creature out of two creatures. Just give them one, like smash their HP together and then just let them take two turns in combat and like do stuff. Break the rules a lot and it will be more fun, I think. <laughs> You'll also recognize that there are some things you shouldn't break as you do yep. it, but you know, learn by failing, fail forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hit um, points is me, the biggest difference in challenge rating too. Like yeah. n the difference between challenge rating four and six character sometimes is just hit points, which is wild. But I think once you recognize mm -hmm. that, you can look and be a little more critical about what they yeah. can and yeah. do in terms of That's attacks fair. and effects. Yeah. Um, I have never GM'd a system that has anything like that at all. Um, mm. So for me, I've just mostly done it on the fly, um, mm. and I've gone almost purely narrative. Um, I think one tip I will say is don't be scared to change the uh, stat line you're using mid-combat. Um, if you're worried that the players are getting trounced and... Mm. Um, it's not a good narrative place to get trounced. Um, one thing I did in Empire, the first time you guys went up against, um, the Servitors, I deliberately used, um, Servitors with less armor, because you had significantly weaker weapons. I didn't want those Servitors to just trundle into you and clobber you to bits. Um, because that wouldn't have been any fun, and sure. it would have would have made for a poor story. Um, so um, I, you know, in in that particular instance, you guys were super lucky and blew them to pieces. But um, you know, don't don't be scared to adjust the stat lines. Yeah. Um, having some flexibility with the encounter as well. Um, in the final, in the final Empire um, battle, I had the option, if I needed to, to throw more or fewer um, uh, ships at you at once during those attack waves. Mm. Um, in the end, I stuck mostly to to my plan um, because even though the characters were completely wiping the floor. It was still intense because they kept coming, mm -hmm. um, and and I'm I was I was perfectly okay with that because I <laughs> I met, I can't remember who I mentioned it to. I've never I've never had as much fun losing <laughs> as I did in yeah. that in that final battle. That was that was from a GM perspective. Mm. My encounter was it was just crushed. And boy, did I enjoy having a time getting curb stomped. Um. <laughs> I, have, I have a bit of a hot take on this, so I'm, I'm going to be contradictory to you Go for on. the sake of drama. Yeah, sure. I, uh, if, so, so I will agree with you that if you recognize in combat that you as the DM have botched the difficulty of an encounter, yes. tweaking numbers is okay. Yes. Uh... I think it's better to have interesting story plans for winning every encounter that you give your players. Like I would like I want there anytime I'm going to have my players roll initiative. 
Um, I would like to have a plan for if I win. Um, yes, and, yes. You know, people always worry um, about like the party wipe or the hmm. TPK without thinking yeah. about the fact that we all watch uh, shows and stories and movies where the good guys mm. lose at some yeah. point, only to yeah, come absolutely. back. Yeah. later um, um that's a better way of describing what i was trying to articulate um if you as a games master in the mechanics of the game have screwed up adjusting the numbers is fine um mm -hmm. that's what i rather yeah that that distinction is important narratively um uh like the first couple of combats i gave you were deliberately um, yeah. not too challenging. I wanted you to get into the flow of things. Um, the, <laughs> the 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 first combat with flapping flapping Harry uh, as an example. Um, I used my bandit profile, which was about um, two and a half thousand experience human mm. um, with a with a fairly tough stat line actually. Um, uh, so I was like, okay, let's let's make this balanced quote unquote and we'll see how we do um the the uh what was going to happen from that particular um uh combat if you'd have lost you would have been taken prisoner and then we could have gone gone from mm -hmm. gone from there but um in terms of um uh narrative stuff don't be afraid to beat your players as well, yeah. for sure. Right. It's not a competition. It's collaborative storytelling, but yes. it is a competition sometimes. There's a, yeah, there's it's... an element of both to it. I think there was a principle. Less, um, yeah, less, less competition and more here is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Are you good enough? Beat my challenge if you dare. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I I like the principle. I think this is, I read it first. I'm sure this isn't the first place it's been written, but Monster Hearts in their source book wrote that they see keeping a story feral as a core principle of the game. And that means that it, since it is a game with dice, sometimes things will go wildly off kilter and that's possible yep. and if the dice decide to let that happen in service of trying to tell the most interesting story that you can mm. um honoring that can be really interesting and and yeah absolutely. i mean i don't want to i i absolutely agree you know trying to get the combat to be as challenging or or as you know introductory yeah. as you want it to be is a good yeah. plan to make and i think most of the time you can yeah but um you know uh, having a player character die in an unexpected way mm -hmm. could be the most interesting and memorable part of your campaign yeah absolutely you never know um a great example ho hopping back to the final final battle of empire i didn't up the difficulty too much once I saw how effective the preparations and how just how screwed I was getting by the dice, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with with the combat, my my Eldar waves were just getting annihilated by everything, <laughs> by absolutely everything, and. I am, I, I, as I mentioned, 100% for that. I could have upped the difficulty. Um, I tweaked it, you know, bumped it up ever so slightly, chucked, chucked a couple more, couple more ships at you than I was planning to. But um, in terms of keeping to the encounter as approximately as possible, yeah, that's that's what I did. Um, I'm glad I did it. It was great. There were, and yeah, equally going back, there was um, in the reactor, especially when everyone discovered just how mortal they were. Mm -hmm. When Finny got knocked into that secondary cooling loop, what a moment that was! Yeah, that was. 
Um, I yep. think another tool in your toolbox as, as a mm. game, someone who's running a game too is that um, you don't just, I'm kind of, it feels, it's, it's, it's definitely, if you feel okay with it, it's okay to change stats. I like to try to find every other way to, um, I don't know, make a combat more interesting that isn't interesting yes. within the narrative. Another yep, tool yep. is that your enemies don't have to always have TPK as the goal. More sure, interesting yeah. goals and even goals that change mid fight. Mm. Like one thing that might happen might be, um, you know, you're in a fight and it looks like your player characters are having a hard time. Maybe one of them notices, hey, uh, that, look at that sparkly magic item this character is having. And Ooh. their leader says, hey, that right there is worth more than the rest of it. Focus on get that and let's get out of here. Um, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, um, there are big consequences because that's the party's best magic item. Uh, and they're going to lose it if they lose the combat, but it's not necessarily, you know, yeah, fatal it, it, for it, it, everyone. It, yeah, TPK. Mm -hmm. um, and as you get more experienced with with GMing, these sorts of things will happen. Don't be, don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be too scared to throw powerful creatures at your characters because equally your characters have the option of running away hopping back to empire that's what the group did at one point i was True. expecting i was expecting a boss fight there a boss fight quote unquote like in difficulty and mm -hmm. i was expecting at least a fate point burn instead they were like no let's leave <laughs> this is too this is too hard you <laughs> yeah, and we get out of there and yeah it that decision turned into some brilliant, brilliant moments. And I have absolutely no regret that the prep, the, the operational prep I did wasn't used. NBD, I can use all of that prep for other things in the future. That's not a 100%. problem. Um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. I was going to disagree with you again. <laughs> it was going to be a whole thing. No worries, no worries. Oh, um, oh, oh. Um... I th I'm not the first person to have said this. Oops. Don't plan on your characters running. I have heard yes. um, DMs complain because they're like, I threw an adult red dragon with a gang of orcs at my party and they should have ran away. It was much too difficult for them. You are playing a game where your mm. characters are heroes. And yes, you, one sure. of the things that you can expect players to do is be heroic and do foolhardy things yeah. in service of adventure and heroism. Mm. So uh, to plan an encounter, again, I think, yeah, players can run away. Um, yeah. And, and you can even, you know, it. sometimes out of character be like, this isn't going well, you might need to think about another strategy. Mm. But yeah, never count on your players declining a fight. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, you, using, especially if you have um, an anime grade hero with swishy hair and sound effects that happen every time they move and a ray of light that mysteriously comes in from out of frame every time there's a camera close up and they're like, yeah, I'm going to take on that dragon. It is my, it is my destiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think sometimes um, there is a level yeah. of like faith that um, it, a lot of this, I think, is like expectation setting. I think players sometimes have this faith that they combat should be balanced and they expect it to be balanced. Yeah. Um, and you sort of just have to. I think this is a session zero thing. Yes. To communication explicitly say whether you're going to try combat to be balanced or not. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, do we have any other questions? Oh, uh, for playing online, how important would you consider cams for people? Indifferent. Well, you... It's great to have them. If people are okay, if people don't want to go on cam, that's also cool. Um, most of my GMing, uh, has been done without cameras. So, um, it's, it's nice to have. It's not needed. Um, and uh, any additional rules, tips for GMing on Twitch rather than offline? 
Um, that's a big one, but I want to go over that, like, quickly, because I want to do, like, the Roll20 yeah. setup and stuff. I would say, um, um, make encounters shorter. Combat is rarely interesting to a viewer. Yeah. It's yeah. fun for as a player, um, but, like, watching someone else and not getting to make the choices is mm. not fun. It's the, um... It's the danger of what could happen mm. and how combat goes. So I think yes. literally it's just it, trying to make yeah, it fast. Na nar narratively, it needs to be interesting rather than mechanically interesting. Yes. Playing around a table or not for an audience, mechanically interesting combat is awesome. Yeah. Because your players sure. are engaged in it. Yeah. Not um, not for stream. Yeah. D Dark Heresy, as, a, as an example, the combat can, if you're not careful as a games master can take literally hours mm -hmm. um that was the reason i automated so much stuff and did like a ton of stuff on the fly with um uh, with with my with my battles it's also the reason why i had um npc stat lines generated beforehand that's why i had all of that prepared so i could just pick it up and go okay these are the guys that they're facing um and and just run with it so i wouldn't have to flick through the rule book constantly yeah. unless there was like a specific um you know make or break skill or something that was happening we had to do that a couple of times on on empire and i don't regret that at all um because in my opinion those were more important in that particular moment than the the flow of combat itself because that mm -hmm. was like a um, a defining thing that could or couldn't happen. Um, Word. So yeah, so um, yeah. I, in terms of in terms of that, the only thing you really can't do on Twitch, unless you're streaming a, a, a game around a table, is um, you can't speak in out of character quite as quite as much if you're getting deep into roleplay. Um, but being able to switch backwards and forwards is 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 handy. I personally encourage that. Like, if if my players were were stuck on something, and like, uh, how do I do this rule? And um, is it okay if I know this NPC? You know, hopping back to the Lando question, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, but yeah, that that goes into like communication. And, um, unless you have anything extra or i've missed a question in the list because i've foolishly i haven't actually marked off which ones i've answered Fair i should have no. done that well but... did we um did we uh pick on that topic that was your last message i uh, did oh, you want to get into um, that um i wonder if you guys could talk a little about building so Ooh, social encounters uh yeah, let's cover let's cover that for 10, 10 15. Um so for me social encounters um I I touched on this in my world building workshop last week. You can check out the vod um if you like. Um but it goes back to the 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 asking the question why why is an NPC doing the thing they're doing? Um, Lily, the GM, um, and um, and Harry, um, who's the the writer who uh, helped with uh, Legacy of Bulls, um, they work on a threats and opportunities model, uh, which is also really cool. Um, it's a, it's a more distilled and precise version of my kind of more general on the fly why questioning. Um, Take take your pick. Either flavor's good, or whichever works better for you. Um, but having motivations and reasons for a character, for an NPC, uh, to be there, to be wanting something, to be getting in the way of the party, whatever. Why are they doing that? That will then inform how the social interaction can then proceed. I can't give you, you know, dreadfully good tips on Dungeons & Dragons social interaction because I don't know the system well enough. Um, I'll defer to LSP for that, but for Dark Heresy, um, what I tend to prefer is I, pref I use um, 
character roleplay to inform bonuses and malices on a subsequent roll. Um, a lot of the time, I gave really generous bonuses because everyone around the table uh, was just so bloody good, and I was rewarding the good roleplay, um, which is another thing I'll we'll we'll get into. Um, but um, having that role play, a, a great example would be the interaction between the group and the obstinate officials in Blackhold, who were less than enthused about more inquisitional thugs coming along. Um, <laughs> their first interaction had been with the um, with the the previous group. I'm not going to spoil why, just in case people want to watch it, but. Um, that could have turned into a combat at any point, but the group kept it together in a social sphere with excellent roleplay and some really lucky rolls, um, and that's how that panned out. I did, like, hours of prep for the combat that I was, you know, had up my sleeve if it happened. Again, I'm not the slightest bit concerned that none of that particular prep was used, because I can use that prep again in future. Um, how about you? I don't think I'm the best at social encounters, uh, and, and there are probably many more experienced um, uh, GMs who could give mm. some really in-depth advice, but yeah. I guess, I think the things that I have really found for me that help are uh you touched on making sure that characters have their own motives um their yeah. own goals that you know maybe mm -hmm. run contradictory or perpendicular uh to the parties um i th i think it's super helpful to give them a face uh like i just collect pictures of people um or or like character spec art because mm -hmm. to what See was that someone's AI thing that you used for Dragon's character uh, sister? This person does not exist, I believe is yeah. the name of it. Yeah, let me, um, um... that's that can just give you a bunch of human faces, and sometimes mm. I guess I think you're, we're so conditioned to look at someone's face and expression and assign a bunch of meaning to it, uh, and the more meaning and depth your characters have, the more fun those encounters can be mm. i think uh sort of along the same lines it's cool to make characters weird yeah um yeah that person doesn't exist no, yeah that this, is, this is all this is all ai stuff this person does not exist.com oh there you go there's a link in chat um we'll, we'll pop this in discord as well as part of um resources and stuff um but yeah. yeah sorry carry on no, no, no. I, I think I think um, it's tempting to make it your characters. You you do want them to be somewhat realistic and grounded, mm. but I sort of push that a bit because I would rather them give. In a social encounter, I think you're giving players the opportunity to respond to interesting prompts mostly um mm. and giving them like reasons to have big feelings opportunities to like show emotion i think yeah. that's what separates role-playing games from games yep, um yep. and so i think that having a very a character who has a very strange point of view mm. um or or very unusual goals Yes. Uh, or just a very strange appearance that makes them more memorable and it also gives players the opportunity to show their characters um, you know what what is my character like? Well they're going to show you by reacting to this strange circumstance that's sort of putting them off balance Yeah, yeah. It, um, a great example um, from Empire uh, I think was um, Finny getting a cow <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which was which was just great. Um, welcome in Raiders. Hope you guys have uh, had spectacular um, spectacular time over with gaming FTL. 
um, go go check out go check out Gaming FTL. He's awesome and spectacular, and also does tabletop shenanigans. Uh, mm. If you wanna if you wanna learn from a very good games master, you could do worse. I was saying. gonna say I'm almost <laughs> embarrassed to continue talking about how to run a game while well, I just <laughs> asked Josh. <laughs> right, right. Why am I why am I telling you that? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but um, yes, I hope you guys I hope you guys over a uh, um, gaming FTL. Welcome on in. We're we're Adventure Tavern. We do shenanigans and stuff. Um, we're in between shows at the moment, so we decided to chuck on a couple of workshops. This one being um, our advice for new games masters on how to games master, basically. Tips, tricks, resources, that kind of stuff. Um, and we've just been covering social encounters, which is something for sure. If you, it, 100%, if you, if you want to learn um, really good social encounters, go check out Gaming FTL's mm -hmm. work, 100%. Um, I'll say on the, on that note too, um, especially so if like me you have mainly played Dungeons and Dragons or its derivatives, Pathfinder, mm. um, and you feel like your social interactions are not very interesting, it might be worth that. That might be your sort of signal to try another system because yeah. Dungeons and Dragons does not give you much structure and no. structure helps you be creative so more yeah. creative social encounters can sometimes come from games with interesting social structure rules yeah um let's let's name drop vampire the masquerade is a fantastic system for social encounters actually uh, especially um with uh, legacy of bulls concluding recently its first season um and timely raid from from uh, jersh they were doing um, femme fatales, no vampires oh, this time. Femme, oh, was it femme fatales? Ah, oh. I don't know what that means, but I'm interested to hear more. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go check out that vod afterwards, honestly. Um, but um, yeah, Vampire the Masquerade is a great system with a ton of interesting social interaction stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Nuke does point out. Ask ask your players if they want yeah, more interesting. Yeah, Sometimes they're sure. like, "No, yeah. we want to fight stuff." We want Session to hit zero. things with our hammers. <laughs> um, yeah, going back into communication, um, but you can um, uh, you can uh, adapt the rules you have. Um, Dark Heresy is another is another system where social interaction is brief. It's nowhere near as detailed as, as like physical combat. Mm. Um, that's why I as as a as a games master, I tend to rely on roleplay quite a lot with social stuff. Um, and I then start leaning into uh, mental skills, such as um, convincing, deceiving, um, charming, all of that kind of stuff. Um, as a yardstick on how the reaction goes. Uh, Dark Heresy has the, you know, how much do you fail or succeed by thing. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, of course, you've got your your natural twenties slash natural ones thing going on if you want to want to use that. Uh, you got your your DCs, um, and you can have a sliding scale um, for sure of how well or how badly they do. Um, you might. If 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 you if if they uh, if you have say not quite enough money to stay at an inn for the evening, you know, trying to barter with the innkeeper, but you only fail by a smidgen, um, then you could say that um, gives you shelter, but you're you've only got like one room. Someone's gonna have to sleep on the floor or something. Mm. You know, just just off the top of my head. Um, on the systems but, thing. I wanted to yeah. give a quick pitch for Powered by the Apocalypse. Um, oh, yeah. It is a very um, generic core system that people mm. have then built rules for for dozens yes. and dozens of settings. Witchcraft um, and wizardry. Exactly. Yep. There's that one yep. that Wack built for uh, Harry yeah, Potter. Ab ab absolutely. I'm Tons just give of different table things. Story a shout out as well, actually, Perfect. because if yeah, if you want to see, if you sure. want to see Powered by the Apocalypse. In, in action Tuesday on Table Story, um, just down here, um, they 
do witchcraft and wizardry, which is powered by the apocalypse. Yeah. Fantastic system. You can see the differences. It's great. What it does really well is it gives you more than just succeed or fail. The dice, uh, any, any you know, roll result will have a number of um, consequences. And mm-hmm. often the way that it happens is in the hands of the players. That is a system that is yeah. much less from like dictated by the game master to the players yeah, and yeah. much more we're all sort of deciding what's going to happen yeah, together. There's um, uh, using witchcraft and wizardry as an example. Um, if uh, someone rolls a partial success, they have a list of things that they can choose from and then they can start bartering with the GM as to what they're trying to accomplish and which particular option they're, they're going by and then the GM can come back with a with a response from that um so yeah that's that's a that's a great uh a great example of a of a much um much more socially capable uh system i'll i'll say um so uh yeah um so you have to disappear soon ish anything else you want to cover um before i start getting into the the roll 20 setups Get a big sheet of gridded paper. <laughs> These are like 20 bucks for like 50 pages. It's my very favorite thing in terms of uh, GM tools. Mm. Uh, oh, man. Just sitting down in front of a big sheet with a bunch of lines on it. There are so many things you can do. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any like, yeah. you know, I, it's that's great for really, maps really and all sorts point. of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm a computer professional i do like web development a job almost everything i do is done on the computer except for games master notes Mm. because being able to scribble something down on a piece of paper with a pencil quickly is not something that you can replicate easily with a computer if i have to write down like a certain dice roll real quick so that I can remember it and, you know, just pop it out of my head whilst I concentrate on other stuff and refer to it later. Boom. Um, totally unrelated to that, too. Uh, just something that I wrote as a note that I, um, I I believe in pretty strongly. I think this is a Matt Colville thing, too. I, I don't none okay. of my ideas are original. Um, <laughs> don't don't get that twisted. Yeah, uh, but I think that if you're going to ask your players to suspend their disbelief and buy Mm. into imagining that a world is real, you owe it to them to make that as easy as possible. Uh, One of the things that I like to do that is never, I try to never um, articulate that I am deciding something or making it up on the fly because I'm not a character. I don't yeah. exist as the game master in the world. And so if somebody asks me a question and I need to randomly generate something uh, or or I just hadn't planned for it, and I don't know the answer, mm-hmm. um, rather than saying like that doesn't exist or we're going to make it up or something like that or let me you know randomly generate it, yeah. I usually go with, I don't know yet. I'll find out or something. Like the idea is and yeah. I, it exists it has been determined because the world exists and persists and we're all in it, but I can't tell you right now, you know, your window is smudged into the world at the moment type Mm, thing. Yeah, for sure. I think that distinction kind of matters. Um, yeah, I'm really bad at doing that. Actually. I, I, that being said, I don't mind being slightly scuffed about say my, um, uh, my my prep because I'm not mm. a naturally organized person in the slightest. Um, I am I am hideously scatterbrained. Uh, there are reasons for that. Uh, won't go into them at the moment. But um, I compensate from that by doing as much prep beforehand as possible, so that I'm not you know caught too short if something comes up that I haven't planned for. Mm. Um, and uh, just playing into that i think um is is like astacon charm 
somewhat. He's going to be disorganized because that's just how he is. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that speaks to any of these like rules or tips or anything like that. Mm. I think it can feel like they're requirements for being good, but I think that most yeah, for sure. really good, fun GMs have stuff they're pretty bad at. Um, and, yep. uh, and nobody nobody <laughs> checks every yeah, box. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to be bad at stuff. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help with stuff. Um, is it Jake and... from Adventure Time? He said being kind of bad at something is the first step to being kind of good at something. Yeah, yeah, that, that's actually really great advice. It's one of my sort of fate. I've never seen Adventure Time. I've seen the. Um, I say Adventure you know, Time or Adventure Tavern. You said Adventure Time. Okay. Um, yeah. Right. Um, and it's 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 like one of the best pieces of advice I've ever seen ever. Uh, it's it's absolutely stellar. Um, yeah, uh, back over to you. Any other bits? Um, I mean, I, I just think on that note, like, it's intimidating to, uh, to plan a game. And a lot of times you'll like sort of pour your heart and soul into it and have this vision of how it's going to go. Yeah. Um, and that can be disappointing if it doesn't go exactly the way that you planned, uh, potentially. Mm. I guess, um, I don't know if this is like too philosophical or, or whatever, but it, it's a really nice thing to do for your friends to plan a game. And just in trying, I think most people really appreciate that you're like yeah, trying to make absolutely. a fun time for them. Yeah. Going, I think going back to our very, very first and most important point on. Yeah, yeah. It's. I think it's pretty tempting to compare yourself to how other people do things yeah, and hold absolutely. yourself to some standard in your head about how good yeah. you have to be. But sometimes the I, I think it's it's more people, in my opinion, should give running a game a shot. Yeah, and I suspect Absolutely. that fear that it's difficult holds it's, more people back than it should. Yeah, it's not as challenging as it first appears. I would say you'd you you do have to be reasonably familiar with the system you're running. If you can play it a few times before running, but if if it's a really simple system, I th I think like Microlight Twenty is um is a simple one especially mm. because it's designed to fit on a single piece of a4 paper the core rules um if you want to give that a go as an example um then then yeah there, there are like really really light systems by comparison dungeons and dragons is more complex mm -hmm. um it, it's got it's got a nice rich depth that you can really get your teeth into that crunch um but um it's complicated and, and, i think it's yeah, a gradient it's, if you play yeah. a really really simple system uh and you ha don't have a lot of experience it can kind of lead to you sitting across from the table going hmm. what do we do now they didn't give us much to work with yeah, yeah. um um so yeah it's 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 a balance don't get don't be afraid of like dungeons and dragons is crunch because it's a really mm. crunchy system it's much better than it was for sure fifth edition is is great by comparison mm -hmm. to like 3.5 or 4 um uh and i guess particularly on the the way to look at that stuff mm -hmm. right with the depth with the amount is there is not that you must know any amount of it in order to run a game but just that knowing like it, it is there any published tabletop rpg book is a resource that you can yes. use you do not um, have to know all the rules. I don't yeah, know all the D&D sure. &D rules at all. We stream it and I'll be yeah. like, what does that do? Tell me about that power. I have no yeah, idea that what that does. Wasn't it like Misty Step or something that Dragons did um, in Daybreak City Nights 1? And you're like, what? And everyone's <laughs> like, excuse me, you're a fighter. What are you doing? <laughs> I, I I, think it was... which would. Yeah, it, that that was the one that. So I, I I'm not sure if you knew that one previously or not, but that that was that caught everyone off guard and like, mm -hmm. oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I, um, I do not know the actual effects of ninety percent of the spells in that game. Yeah, yeah, 
sure. you look them up when you need them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of the same with say Dark Heresy version one. The core like uh, resolution mechanic is is super super basic. Mm -hmm. um, but you start expanding outwards. There's tons of detail that you can get involved in, like. The, the psychic power rules, I will have to look up. I've GM'd the system for like seven years or something. Um, and yeah, I will still need to look rules up and things. So don't be afraid of that. Um, and uh, I think a, a, a last final tip, pop, coming back into like the fun stuff, as the games master, you are the... Um, you are the world. Um... And don't be afraid to alter the rules if it means that people will have more fun and it makes more sense to do so. Uh, when we ran Empire, we had tons of house rules um, that I, I did my best to explain. I didn't have too many complaints mm. about them, so I think I did all right. Um, but uh, having, you know, feel... feel once you have experience, if you don't like a thing, say to your players, this rule is kind of dumb. I'd like to change it. Thoughts? Yeah. For sure. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Okay, so, um, how long have you got, roughly? And this may be a good point to draw the line for me. Okay, cool. Unless, so, you, got, uh, unless yeah. you have another question for me or anything like that. Uh... Or... Anything pressing? Unless you have anything like specific for roll twenty that you could cover, like in I don't know three minutes. <laughs> but use templates for character sheets. People, I guess in general, if you're going to play a game online, yeah, use the things that make it easier. Yeah, people yeah, have sure. put a lot of time and effort into automating a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um. Cool. Uh, Nuke's got a final question, I think, that's probably worthy of your your attention. Favorite 5e house rule? Technically, um, drinking a potion as a bonus action is a house rule. Oh. Um, I... I mean, I think my favorite house rules are giving player characters abilities that they can't get um, that 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 are specific to their um, to their story. So, um, yeah. for instance, um, to to uh, use Daybreak City Nights as an example, um, a feature in Dungeons and Dragons is just a special rule that applies sometimes. Um, Winona's character, who has a background as a smuggler, gets double um, proficiency bonus on stealth checks mm. when she's in a boat. Um, because yeah, when Nona's background is that she was, you know, always piloting ships and being sneaky. And so the idea that you wouldn't have a special ability there, you have to house rule it if you want that mm. to be a thing, yeah, but yeah. it's worth, you know, doing little details like that because yeah, it makes them... It makes the decisions your your players made about their character's backstory meaningful and special. I guess that's, you know what? If I have a big overarching philosophy about um, writing stuff in d d it's that um, think about things being really important to the player characters um, and then mess with it. <laughs> like, uh, either either give them what they want or take what they the things that they most want should mm. be in tension and should be at risk potentially either getting more yeah. of it or losing what they have um, and I think that if you make it clear that those things are at stake it's it, and, and, and you make it clear like what the choices that they have are and what those choices mean, you're, you know, on your way to telling a pretty good story. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, you have to disappear off, so I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you for having me, chat. You're most welcome. Stay weird. And 
Stay weird. <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll just unceremoniously tip. Thanks again. Ascon, you're the best. I can't you're wait for welcome. more stuff on this channel. We need shows. Stay tuned. They're being planned, I think. Yes. Yes. Plans. Plans are afoot. Um, oh, hi. Hello. Uh, let me just do that real quick. Oh, wow. That's actually super, super zoomed in. Goodness. Um, can I can I adjust that a little? Eh. All right. That'll do. <laughs> there you go. So, um, hopping in, hopping in now to like the um, the technical aspect of stuff regarding Roll Twenty as an online games mastering tool. So, what I've done um, is I've gone here and I've logged into Roll Twenty. I'm not going to show you like the login screen and stuff because I've got important secret things there and not allowed to show you. Um, so before we before we start with that, uh, I've gone into creating a new campaign. Um, that is app dot uh, roll twenty dot net forward slash campaign slash new. It's it's a pretty obvious link. You can get there uh, easy peasy. Pick yourself a name. Um, if you have a cool name for your campaign, pop it in there. Um, and next. This is kind of important. Choose a character sheet to get the most out of Roll20. Um, in my opinion, you will need the correct character sheet as best you can for the game that you're running. They have a big list. Uh, we're going to go with Dungeons and Dr no, okay, D Dungeons and Dragons, um, fifth edition. Of which there are many. Uh, I'm just going to go by roll 20. There we go. Here we are. And this is the Dungeons and Dragons character sheet. Great. Fantastic. Do they have VTM? Yes. But the dice rolling um, for VTM isn't great. That's why on Legacy of Bulls, um, we use a Discord server with uh, the dice rolling bot. Particularly um, because the uh, Roll20 dice rolling doesn't show uh, hunger and criticals and messy criticals and stuff quickly. The, the dice roller in Discord is better. So we have character sheets on Roll20 and we use the Discord dice roller for, for that stuff. Um, but yeah, they, they do have, they do have the, the Vampire the Masquerade. It's, it's Actually, you know, it'd be easier just to search for it. There we go. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade, 5th edition, Vampire Dark, Dark Ages, Requiem, all kinds. Um, so yeah, go ham. Um, a free account lets you create like three or five games. I can't remember which exactly. Um, sign up. Go nuts. Have a play. Um, but yeah, in terms of Dungeons & Dragons though, um, Dungeons & Dragons is quite well supported. Especially 5th edition. Um, so let's get a character sheet. Uh, yep. Spot on. And boom. Ready. Create the game. Okay. So I can now add a... Um, choose a file. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I've got like uh, something in my... Oh yeah, that would be a good one. I'm just going to use one of the Empire uh, artworks real quick. Just to show off. Uh, if I can find it. Oh no, where have you gone? Ah, uh, paint. There, mm, there, there we go. Uh, and it should... Yeah, there we go. It lets you drop a drop a thing in my hour count. What? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of that is idle time. Um, because I have, I have it running in the background a lot. Because it's part of, uh, my roll the uh, you know adventure tavern dashboard thing uh, so don't worry too much about my hours played a lot of that just sits in the game idly um cool so it lets you set a time for when your game is going to be next i'm just going to say yep yeah, great fantastic um adds that in gives you a date from now um and just underneath 
is an actual oh, uh, playing. Yeah, don't worry about that. Game add-ons. Um, oh, here we go. There are some cool stuff that you can add in here. Can't remember what they do exactly. Uh, dynamic lights and spells and all of this. Feel free to experiment with those. I'm not going to worry about them now. There's also a forum in here if you need that. Great, fantastic. You can add a topic. Wonderful. Now, the next thing you, you will need to do... Um, yes, game settings. Uh, okay, so public access, no. Unless you're specifically just creating a random game that um, you're looking for players for on the Roll20 community, set that to no. Um, you can set a game background image um, up here as well. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh... Vault access. This is tied to your membership level in uh, Roll20. Um, because I pay for a premium account for um, Adventure Tavern stuff, I have access to a character vault that I can store characters in and bring them back out again. Um, that also translates to players. So if the Games Master creates the game and they have a premium account, that's a thing that you can do. Um, right, game settings. This is kind of important, um, so take a few moments to get familiar with this. Um, the width of the standard map. Um, I used a 50 by 50 which is 50 meters by 50 meters for Empire as a Dark Heresy campaign. Um, for Dungeons and Dragons, um, you are looking at five feet per square. Um, so that's, uh, why don't they do it in metric? It makes, metric is just easier on the mathematics, it really is. So uh, five times 25 is 125, I wanna say, 125 feet probably. My maths isn't great. Um, and you can, you can up that as you like. If you're finding that the maps it creates are too small by default, uh, all the five E's, but yeah, I know, right? Um, you can do so in in the page size just here. I'm going to up that just to just to demo that grid. Um, you have the option here of ten feet is about three meters. Yeah, um, you have the option of square or two types of hex grids. Uh, if you're using an isometric map, choose hex. Uh, if you want to just use hexes, you can. Um, but squares is default. Measurements. Um, there are four different ways you can do this. Um, the D&D 5e 4e is, is the default. Uh, I used Euclidean or um, Empire um, because Empire doesn't prescribe... Uh, Empire, sorry. Uh, Dark Heresy doesn't prescribe a grid system. It's designed to be played, uh, if you wanted to, with you know, Games Workshop minis on, on a on a table with no grid at all. Um, so so that's a thing. I, I used I used that for that. Great, fantastic. Fog of War. Um, don't enable this if you have dynamic lighting support. Dynamic lighting is really cool. I'll show you how to sort that out um, afterwards. Token defaults. Um, Bar 1 is green, bar 2 is blue, bar 3 is red. Those appear above the tokens, um, and I use them uh, for tracking health, fate points, and um, fatigue in Dark Heresy. I set my defaults to 15, 0, and uh, 3, because these will affect and this will affect everything you drop in. Personally, I'd leave them blank. <laughs> um, and let's see, standard compact, great. Uh, so player permissions, yes. Add, um, if you want the players to be able to see the NPC names, check this. I'd say leave it blank. 
Um, text overlays, yeah, great. Um, your, your bars, I'm just gonna enable all of these. Again, your choice. Um, compendium settings, wonderful. If you're doing Dungeons & Dragons, it has a great integration with the compendiums available on Roll20. Um, you feel free to experiment, I'm not going to go too far into, into those. Um, so I want to share with more players and games, current players, match players, okay. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, and yeah, these, these are all of the compendiums I have. Um, so I can add in, like, Tome of Beasts and Empire of Ghouls and Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Um, I got the Essentials Player's Handbook and Monster Manual as, like, a bundle thing it was on offer. Um, again, up to you. Uh, the Compendium is useful, so if you're doing this regularly, I would consider the purchase. Um... So let's save the compendium settings. Let's save the defaults. Uh, okay, so it's asking me to... When it asks about the reload, that's fine. Just hit leave page. That's because it is giving you all of that. Um, and the character sheets. There's tons of character sheet defaults in here as well. Um, Dex tiebreaker to initiative. Uh, global, no, uh, no, add character name to templates, no, water level, yeah, on, encumbrance, yeah, your encumbrance, uh, set that rule up, depending on how you're doing encumbrance in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the rest leave is compendium compatible, um, and these, these give you the defaults on, like, um, what's occurring with tokens, uh, again, Feel free to experiment. I'm not going to go in too much with that. Uh, great. Fantastic. So that's that's the settings. Now we click back. Yes, we want to leave the page. Wonderful. Invite your players here. Um, you can get an email address there. You can send them a link. Um, that's all good. Um, I will be deleting this game afterwards, so don't worry. Uh, if you did see the link, it's not going to exist beyond this. Even if you do join, the GM has to um, assign players to character sheets manually. There's nothing that you could do uh, without my intervention. So, launch the game. And sometimes a bit slow. Consider looking for the other source for the system you're playing. Yeah, that's fair. Um... So this is the compendium here that I was mentioning, um, and it allows you to... Oh, oh, that's because I can't spell. It allows you to search very quickly, in my experience very quickly, stuff. You click on it, and it gives you the stuff you've searched for um, as, a, um, as, a, as, as a title. So creating a wizard, as an example. Um, you can drag and drop stuff from this as well. I'll get into that shortly. So, this is your default... Your default doofer. Great, fantastic. Um, you can adjust your settings here. Um, so, down here. Oh, video and audio chat options. Um, you can completely disable it. And that's what I'm going to do, because you're probably going to be using Discord, or probably... Um, uh, you can... Uh, uh, you, you know, using other communications methods that are more reliable than the web uh, interface on Roll20. You could use Roll20 if you wanted to. I'd say you just use Discord. Um, it's easier and, and, and more reliable. Uh, so here, uh, there's also player avatar size, names only. That gets rid of the, the chonky avatar just here. Um, oh yeah, I, thank you for that, Nuke. Um, Nuke has dropped in a link, 5e.tools forward slash index.htm. Um, that gives you another a great 
um, resource for looking up uh, 5e rulebooks and stuff. Option to add home rulebooks. Nice. Um, okay, so that's... Um, oh yeah, and it gives you the option to exit the game here as well. If you're stuck about where to close this without closing the tab, exit game uh, under your cog gives you the... Um, uh, the option to head back to the main site and, like, the forum and settings of the game and stuff. All right. Here, if you're familiar with Roll20, is where you do your dice rolling. Fantastic. I got a 19. Wonderful. Um, oh, and also here, uh, you've got your display name. That you can update... Uh, so if you have a character, so if I um, if I roll again, there we go. It'll now come up as Astacon the Bestest. If you have your characters rename themselves in that field, um, it'll give you a bit more immersion um, when, when you're actually rolling dices. Fantastic. Um, next thing you should probably do is sort out your character sheets. So, uh, third tab along, best of con. <laughs> Th third tab along, add character. Great. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Um, I'll add it just to me. So once your players are in the game, you can add them to the player journals and the can be edited and be controlled by. Um, what I also like to do I also like to add the character, uh, the tag character. Um, okay, so uh, you can have an avatar. Uh, let's use this one here that I bought uh, recently-ish. There we go. Great. I have a rat avatar. Fantastic. Uh, you can have a uh, you can have a, um, a a default token as well. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, and once you have, um, oh yeah, and there's a secret GM notes section as well. Once you've, once you've got that done, there we are. So GM notes only available to, <laughs> it's Finny. <laughs> Rude, but not untrue. Um, you can keep all of your GM notes related to the character here. I would thoroughly recommend you take full advantage of that. I'm not going to show you Empire because there's stuff that, are, you know, um, the characters will hopefully be making a comeback for like a Christmas special. I don't want to spoil stuff for everyone. Um, but I made a lot of use of the GM notes thing here for background characters, who hates them, who likes them, favors owed, all of that stuff. Wonderful. You have then got the character sheet itself. Um, for Dungeons and Dragons, as a GM, this is all you need to do. Assign it to a player, let them use the character mancer to run through the character generation process. Um, if you're creating an NPC, boom, there we go, NPC options. Uh, so NPC type, um, uh, Dave is going to be a, is going to be a Dave. Okay, armor class, um, 15 type. Yeah, let's go with scale mail. Uh, hit points, 10. Formula, uh, I don't know what formula does. I've never, you know, I've never done games mastering for Dungeons and Dragons. The reason I'm choosing Dungeons and Dragons is for the, um, integration with the compendium. I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, use the character mancer. Don't roll up characters somewhere else and transfer the values and make it insanely tedious. Yes, 100%. Thank you, Nuke. 100% yeah, use the character mancer as a player. I'll step you through that shortly, but I'm just, you know, pulling a character out of my butt real quick just to demonstrate, like, how to create a stat line. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's make this, like, generic bandit. Um, great, fantastic. Speed, 30. Um, and then you can add some skills. Um, great, let's, let's just, uh, let's just do this. Um, I'm just pulling these numbers out of my butt. 
because this is an NPC, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, vulnerabilities, great, wonderful. Um, add in the general stuff, and it then gives you, like... Oh, what are, what are actions? Oh, yeah! Um, name, um, hit. Uh, melee, uh, yeah, five feet to hit. I don't know, soon see what that does. Um, uh, on hit, 1d8. Um, piercing uh, on hit 2 1d8 piercing a description show things happen uh, you can type in here um, rules and stuff uh, always rolling advantage uh, it can be annoying um, okay that's fair uh, advantage toggle yeah you could also query it I guess um, so NPC whisper never Auto roll damage. Um, I'm going to auto roll damage for this because it's an NPC. Um, NPC names in rolls. Sure. Um, cool. There we go. Okay, we just created an NPC. Um, and hopefully, I should now. There we are. Once I have clicked the the cog here. Oh. It lets me roll to hit. Uh, which is which is great, and there you go, little rat bandit. <laughs> yeah, uh, the car doesn't have advantage. Just take the first number as a tip. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so if I roll disadvantage, the tabs up the top here. Um, there we go, and there it is. It rolled disadvantage and does all the all of the disadvantage stuff for you. Hopping back into my preparation stuff, what I do is I have um, a selection of character archetypes. So I'd have like a tough bandit, a generic bandit, a, a acrobatic bandit, town guard, noble, shopkeeper, child, um, large beast, small beast, yada yada yada. Great, fantastic. Um, that's how to chuck together, like, your generic preparation NPCs. That shouldn't take you too long, depending on how much thought you put into it. I'm not as familiar with Dungeons & Dragons as I am with, say, um, Dark Heresy. Uh, but that's the general gist. You just throw stats at it, make, make it look approximately okay, and you've got a stat line that you can adjust as you need to. Um... Let's now. Oh, uh, this is an NPC. So I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a folder, and I'm gonna call that NPCs. Uh, and I'm gonna put this this rat bandit in my NPCs folder. Ah, you can you can drag it around. It's a bit finickety. There we go. NPCs and characters. Great. 100% do this as you are creating things. It is a fantastic way to um, keep stuff organized. Um, so you could have NPCs in another folder saying like bad guys, good guys, townspeople, rats, whatever. Um, up to you how to organize that, but as long as you're able to quickly navigate and find the stuff you're after, great. Uh, you can also search up here character. Um, really, I should add in, like, bandit or whatever on the tags, um, and then I could search, like, bandit, and my bandits will come up. Wonderful. Great way to, um, uh, yeah, let me, let me edit this here. Call it, uh, rat bandit. Okay, save changes. And bandit shouldn't, there we go, rat bandit now comes up. Wonderful. Um, so let's create now a character. So if I wanted like an actual character as an NPC, um, that's, oh, whoops, that's a thing that I can do. Um, uh, let's, let's see if I've got like a decent token, um, that I can use for this. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's use, let's use Zig's, um, character art, just because it's easily accessible. There we go. 
just just using Zig as a uh, as a stand-in for other art that I might have. Uh, if you're pla if you're doing a show, you have to make sure that you own the license to use the art. Um, that's very important. Don't get like caught out by coming a cropper on copyright. Um, make sure you own the license, or make sure it's public domain. If you can't find any mention of a license, it's copyrighted, all rights reserved. That's the default. You're looking for public domain or creative commons. Uh, one of those two. Make sure you abide by the license conditions. Okay, back to character stuff. Great, fantastic. Uh, character sheet. Use the character mancer. 100%. It steps you through the whole process. If you have access to the compendiums, they will auto-populate. Uh, so I'm gonna pick a Dragonborn. Great. Charisma, strength, uh, alignment, neutral. Size, medium, speed, 30, draconic ancestry, bronze. Why not? Oh, resistance to lightning damage. Great. Languages. Fantastic. It fills all of that out for you. Next. Um, choose a class. Uh, what class should I make this? What, what class should I make this thing? Uh, first person to pick a class get gets it. In chat, go for it. I'll let you guys, uh, let everyone um, have, have a little input here. Rogue! Okay. Good, because I actually... Oh, hang on. No, I don't want... I don't want EK. I want Player's Handbook. There we go. Um, all right. Skill proficiencies. Let's go acrobatics... Perception, persuasion, stealth. Uh, and you get uh, tool proficiencies, expertise. I get to choose expertise on two of these. So I'm going to go perception and stealth. All right, great. Beeth's Cant, uh, sneak attack, equipment. It does all of this for you. Uh, okay. Um, and then you can either... Let's, let's roll for stats, sure. Let's see what we get. Oh, I rolled a six. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Four plus one plus one plus one. Oof. <laughs> okay. I've got... Uh, yeah. So, uh, dex, 17. Um... Intelligence, 11. Wisdom, 12. Charisma, 13. Ooh. Go on. Let's do that. I did get a 17, but Constitution, 6. It's going to make for an interesting one. All right, next. Choose a background. Great. I'm just going to pick one at random. Uh, noble. Uh, tool proficiencies, dice set. Language proficiencies. Um, draconic, I already get. Common, I already... Celestial, sure. Personality traits. I'm just going to pick a couple at random. Uh, bond, yeah, floor. Uh, next. Uh, okay, so you get to choose here either class equipment or uh, don't dumb com ever. No. <laughs> um, this is a games mastering thing rather than the player thing. I'm going to dump com if, con if I want to. Um, so I'm going to choose class equipment, rapier or short sword. Um, uh, Berg, mm, explorer's pack. Sure, why not? Next. Uh, I have six hit points. <laughs> Great. Uh, no feats. Um, okay. And character name, age... 20. Uh, height, I don't know, 7 foot. Weight, 200 pounds. Eyes, grey. Hair, none. Skin, bronze. Oh, that's not how you spell bronze. There we go. Uh, next. And then, done. That's character building. If you're GMing 5e, Get your players to use the character Mancer. Um, 100%. 2 HP more than the commoner, I guess. It's playing on expert difficult, right? Current hit point, 6. <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to be a difficult one. But um, this is just as a demonstration. 
the really cool thing that you can do next. Point your players towards this, cog, and then launch level plus character mancer. This is how you level up. It does all of it for you. So uh, I can choose an average or I can roll. I'm going to roll seven. Yes. <laughs> okay, roguish archetype, multi-class if I wanted to. Great, fantastic. Um, that's, that's basically it. Um, cunning action. That's all I get at level two. Boom, done. Um, cries in first level monk trauma. <laughs> Um, and again, get your players to integrate as best as they can with the character mancer because it makes the paperwork much, much easier. Um, with Dark Heresy, you don't have to worry about this too much. It's just a case of um, cross-referencing the skills list that you have available at your XP level and picking skills and just recording it underneath. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is much more involved. The character mancer simplifies it tremendously. Especially if you have new players to D&D, &D, get them to use the character mancer, please. Um, cool. So, um, that's, uh, that's characters and stuff. Maps and things. Okay, so, I'm gonna grab real quick just a map from my maps folder that I have the license for, or one that I've made myself, and show you guys how to set stuff up on here. Um, so, let's see what I've got that will fit on this. Um, my maps folder's pretty big, so give me a few moments whilst it loads in. You can also, as I mentioned in my world building stream last week, check out like Reddit on Roll20 and Battle Maps. Um, if you're playing just amongst friends, um, those are usually fine to use. Um, let's see. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, this this is this is one that I have the oh whoops, I have the license to. What you have to do. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Um, go over to your, um, oh, here we are, which is the art library. Go to my library. Oh, it's probably in my recent uploads, actually. Check all of this out. Showing everything I've got uploaded. Um, some of this is, oh, yeah, here we go. Snowscape, look, no lighting. Right, great, fantastic. I don't have to worry about uploading it again, but I'm going to do so to show you how to do it. Um, it's pretty easy. Go to my library, click upload, either choose a file or drag and drop. Big pro tip, name the file sensibly. Call it something like map, snowscape, no lighting, trees, crater, river, whatever. Keywords that you can search for in the search box. That will make your life considerably easier if you're looking for something quickly. Especially if it's assets like tables, chairs, furniture, you know, trees, whatever. Um, Roll20 does not manage spells for you. The caster can have access to all class spells. Repair a limited number. You have to look in spells you have prepared. Okay, uh, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you, Nuke. Road, roadside Tavern Desert.jpg. Uh, yeah, as an example. So, uh, not following my own advice with this particular one, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, now, this is a big file, so it'll take a few moments to upload. Um, hopefully, I, uh, hopefully I've not crashed it too hard. How big is this file? Oh God, it's the two. It's the 2.3 megabyte version. Okay, that was not sensible. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close that and use the <laughs> and use the existing one. All right. Um, so you can drag and drop it in. Don't do that yet. Oh yeah, it's huge. It's like uh, four and a half thousand pixels square. <laughs> it's big. Um, over here is your layers. As a games master, you will need to get intimately familiar with the layers. Map and background, select that, then drag your map in. It'll be tiny, don't worry about that, you can resize it. 
If you just grab a corner and resize, it will maintain the aspect ratio. Generally speaking, that's what you want. If the map is uh, much bigger than your playable area, you will have to drag it off the screen and resize it some more. It's a bit tedious, but don't worry too much if you have to do that. So there we go. Boom. Instant map. Um, you can, if you want, um, up here is the, is the page toolbar. This is where you organize all of your battle maps and stuff. What I'd recommend doing before you start the campaign is create a few generic battle maps in the likely environs that your campaign is going to be played. Um, because you will then be prepared with a battle map in case shit hits the fan and you suddenly have to run combat. Um, twice, I very nearly had to do um, combat by... No, sorry, no, I actually had to do, like, proper combat by um, uh, Theatre of the Mind in Empire because I hadn't prepared for something. That was the, uh, the space escape. Uh, control K, M, O for GM layer, object, and map. Ah, cool. Thank you very much, Screen Owl. Um, hotkeys b switch between layers are a thing, but don't ask me what they are. That's very cool. Thank you very much. Um, you can check that out in chat down there, as long as the resolution isn't too much, uh, too bad. Um, so here, you can rename this. So I'm going to call this Icy Forest. Cool. You can resize it. Very important. Okay, so let's make this 30 by 30. Um, and it gives you the, the the pixel size. Generally speaking, the maximum uh, pixel resolution that you'll be dealing with, um, realistically, is about 5,000 pixels square. Um, you can set the grid scale different uh, here as well. So if you have a world map, you can change this. I'll, I'll, I'll drag a world map in so that you can see how this works. Um, so the grid on. Great, you can adjust the grid and stuff. Um, movement. I would thoroughly recommend selecting dynamic lighting barriers restrict movement. Oh, there we go. Thank you. And don't bother with fog of war. Um, don't Also, don't bother with audio play on load. Uh, I would thoroughly recommend that you deal with your audio manually. I'll get to audio in a second. Um, you can also archive and delete it if you like. Uh, I don't want to do that. Dynamic lighting. If you have access to this, turn it on. Um, okay, t don't worry about explorer mode. If you're outside, turn on daylight mode. Or, if you just can't be bothered to place, like, tons of um, light-emitting um, tokens, this is, this is where to do it. Update on token drop? Yes. That stops players, like, peeking around the corner by dragging their token around. Um, right, you've got some advanced settings here. Don't worry about the legacy lighting. That's all good. Save. Um, okay, cool. Now, you can see that I've got uh, a darkness overlay. That's fine. I'm just going to... Because I've resized my map, I'm just going just gonna to adjust that slightly. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, this is, actually a, this is actually a good choice for using this. Great. So, I'm going to grab my bandit. And I'm going to drag them onto... Uh, hopefully... Ah, damn it. I, no, that's, that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong thing. Eh... Okay, hang on. You have to open it up here first. I forgot about this part. And here, you can drag the token on there. I'm just gonna... It should... Oh, hang on. I'm on the wrong layer. This is a thing that will happen. Don't worry about it. Object and layers. There we go. Okay. So, when you drag a token on, make sure you're on the correct layer. You can just drag it from the sidebar. Okay, it's probably just the... Um... Uh, the issue I was having there. So, okay, cool. What you have to do with the token, click the cog, dynamic lighting, vision, on. Night vision. Uh, this I like to do this um, so that 
player characters can feel their way around darkness. Ten feet, night vision effect, um, none. Limit field of vision, you don't have to worry about that. Um, there should be... Uh, is that it? No, okay, we won't worry about that. Um, oh, no, no, sorry, it's not night... Uh, is it night vision? Yes, it is night vision. Night vision, 10 feet. Uh, you can add, like, a... If you're doing a sci-fi campaign, you can add, like, a green tint to this. Uh, but... Oh. Uh, okay. Great. Fantastic. Thank you, Zoom. Uh, one second, everybody. <laughs> My camera's disappeared. Rude. Um, right, this... Is this the thing? It is. Hopefully this works. Oh, no. No. Wow. Zoom said you aren't allowed to be here. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot that Zoom had a time limit, honestly. Uh, where the he Why is my... Yeah, slight technical difficulties. Give me just a second. What a butt. Okay, that's the camera. Right, deactivate. Activate. Boom. Okay. There we go. Hi, hello. Um... It's a good thing I got this prepared earlier. That's for all to bring him back. Yeah, I, I, I have a technical issue with OBS at the moment that makes scene editing extremely hard. It's a user interface bug. Um, I won't get into the details, but needless to say, it's the reason why I had to faff around with that. Um, anyway, back we go. Um, you can limit the field of vision if you like. I don't bother with this. Uh, you can also emit light as well. Um, and that's useful if a character is holding a torch or other light-emitting object. Um, and I mean a torch as in like a traditional torch, or as American, North Americans would call it, a flashlight. Uh, those are options in here. Feel free to experiment. Save. You'll now notice, now that this token has vision, the overlay has gone. That shows that this is now all visible. Great. Layers, dynamic lighting. Grab yourself the line tool, uh, which is just here. Polygon line. It doesn't really matter what the color is. Uh, emit light on a generic circle on DM layer invisible torch and it's still emits light. Yeah. Um, what I do, what I do for like forests and trees is I just draw crosses like this on um, where the trunks are. And the reason I draw crosses and not circles is one, it's much quicker. And two, um, you get essentially, if I go back to the object layer and drag this guy around, you can see how the, the vision changes and it gives the blocking that you're after. This will, be especially for complex um, stuff here. This will speed up the process considerably. Um, and this gives you now the dynamic lighting that you're after um, and the line of sight, which is super cool. Um, so if I go back to the dynamic lighting layer real quick, dynamic lighting, um, I want to say this log here blocks... Oh, hello. Ah, behave. Oh no, I was on the wrong tool. There we go. Polygon line. This log here and this log here block line of sight. I just draw a line across them. Instant, instant, um, instant line of sight blockage. If I had a structure or something, I'm just gonna... Do I have anything suitable? No. I'll just use, like, this tree if it was really big. Um and really bushy and stuff. You just draw a square inside it. Boom! And this will let you very rapidly build out what you need for, like, a forest or something. Um, and fantastic. Now you can start dragging in other tokens, like bandits and beasts and other characters and whatever. Um, wonderful. You have to make sure, though, Hop in back to the objects and tokens layer. Oh, whoops. Accidentally drew a token. You have to make sure 
in details that the name here is controlled by the correct person. Um, so we'll call this we'll call this Dave. Um, and you can select also here. Uh, we should have health. Uh, HP. There we go. It should fill that out automatically. I don't know why it isn't. Uh, but boom, there we go. You've now got an HP readout. Uh, and a green bar above. So say if Dave took like one level of one damage, I can type minus one. Uh, it's made in Scotland from Gerdes, you know. <laughs> um, if I type minus one in here, as a player or as a games master, it will then reduce that by one. Super easy for um, uh, quick maths. So if you take, if, you know, if you've got like a 75 hit points and you take like 33 damage, or, or 37 damage, actually, um, you can go, maths, and you can just type minus 37, enter, boom, done. It, it works all of that out for you. Um, other things that you can come a cropper on um, is... Uh, oh yeah, you got some got some of those as well. Uh, dynamic lighting. Uh, make sure that they've got the vision. Um, make sure that they're being controlled by the correct person. Um, I think that's about it for that. Now, when you're in combat and you need markers, click click your little circle icon underneath, um, and you can add in these random little icons. There's no assigned meaning behind them. Um, they can mean whatever you like. So make a note in your notepad. Have a notepad of what each color is for this combat. If you're using colors, make a note of the symbols being used for whatever they're being used for. This X is probably the easiest one. That me that puts a big red X over a character it means they're dead. <laughs> or out of action. Uh, you can upload m custom marker sets too. Ooh, I didn't know that. Um, ask ask Nuke in Discord uh, about that one. Dead. D-E-D. -E -D, dead. Um, and you can do that for all of the tokens. Now, um, initiative. Uh, initiative is a thing. Let me, let me add in our chap here. Okay, yeah, it didn't do it from there, so I'm going to have to drag the token in. Iska Atawi. Um, and, yeah, let's do a nameplate. Uh, health. The great thing is, once you set these up once, when you duplicate the map, um, all, of the, all of that info will carry across. Um, by setting the attribute here, uh, as, like, um, HP, where is it? HP, um, that will, um, uh, keep track of the HP on the character sheet and automatically display it, which is super useful. Um, okay, so that's cool. Uh, let's do some initiative. Now, initiative, there is a, here he is, turn order. There is a really cool feature in um, uh, Roll20 for initiative rolling. Uh, so let's open up the character sheet. What you have to do, and I keep getting caught out by this myself, you have to select your token first, then click initiative. And, oh hey, I got 19. Wonderful. Um... I can't remember how to do that on NPCs. Let's have a look. No, I'll, I'll just have to add in... Um, uh, add custom item. Um, and we'll call this Dave. Uh, add. Um, and... Oh. Uh, and then we can edit it. So let's say Dave rolls an 11. There we go. Cool. We've now got a turn order. What I tend to do is I, t just to keep things quick when I'm running a show, is I write down NPC initiatives on paper. 
and just track player turns using the turn order. Um, just because setting it up can take a while. If you can do it quickly, for sure, 100%, um, do it through the turn order here because you can click through and it tells you exactly who's going next. It's great. That's a really, really useful tool. Um, okay, that does it. Damage. Uh, yeah. Um, so damage stuff. Uh, you can, for, for NPCs, you can just click on the actions. And that will do the action. For characters, um, same again. Uh, oh, hang on. That was the wrong thing. Um, oh no, that's the token settings. The actual character sheet. Uh, character sheet, there we go. You can, you can roll in like history. Why is that rolling with advantage? I don't know. It's probably because I've set it up uh, to roll with advantage by default. Yeah. Um, this isn't, this is a thing that you can change by the way. Um, in the game settings. Set this to advantage toggle. There you go. Um, I, I like to have auto roll damage um, just because I'm lazy. Um, also, if you're running a variant with... Oh, thank you so much for the... Uh, thank you so much for the, the sub there, Sudden Moves. Uh, if you're running a, a variant um, that uses a different core dice roll, um, like 2d10, this is where you edit it. Now, a really, really important point is once you have created a character sheet, changes are not retroactive. If you make a change in the core settings of the game, you have to go through all of the characters you've already made to make that edit. You might have to go backwards and forwards a couple of times with the, the game settings and the character sheets um, to get them behaving properly. I've, I've had to, um, mostly because I keep forgetting to hit the correct save button. Um, that's a thing you, that you will need to need to do. Once you've done that, I think that's automatic here. Uh, yes, yeah, so if we... Um, Oh, language proficiency. Let's 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 just roll charisma. Oh, nat twenty, twenty two on charisma. Great, fantastic. Let's roll constitution. Oof, and that one. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I love it. Um. So yeah. Um. You can generally rely on the players to keep track of drama, right? Uh, you can re generally rely on the players to keep track of stuff pretty well through these character sheets. Uh, the Dungeons & Dragons one is probably the most advanced. Um, let me... Uh, can I... Oh no, I don't have this on my stream deck, do I? Alright, let me... Let me load this up real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap into the Empire um, game, but I don't want to show you any of the secret stuff. So, so I'm just gonna add like a source control to my stream deck real quick. Um, all right, because I can't I can't do it through OBS, which is what I'd normally do for for this, because simply OBS is busted. Um. All right, this is on the... which, which one are we on? Uh, display one. And... Um, this, yeah, and the thing I want to hide is the browser source. Oh, that's the chat box. Uh, no, it's the window capture. Is... Uh, nope. Ah, bugger, what's it called? <laughs> I've this is this is why it pays to name everything sensibly in your sources list. Oh man, where the heck is it? Oh, there you are. Okay, I've got you. Cool. So, magic. All right, there we are on the fly. I'm going to swap into um the empire uh actually no, no I'm not. I was going to show you, I was going to show you guys, um, I was going to show everybody 
uh, world maps. So let's do that real quick. So to create a new map, create new page, world map. Boom, done. Okay, great. Um, again, same process, map background. Uh, I should have world map. Uh, somewhere in here. This has got all of my assets from like years ago in as well. Um, so I've got like a ton of Skyrim stuff I was using way back when. Um, uh, okay, maybe it's not named map. Maybe I'm gonna have to actually just look for it. Oh, here we go. The in maps, hopefully. Uh, maybe not. I can't remember the name of the... Oh, it's called World Gen. All right. Great. Fantastic. Grab your grab your world map. Uh, chuck it in here. You might have to get the aspect ratio fixed a bit. There we are. If you press and hold Alt whilst dragging it in, it won't snap to grid, and the aspect ratio will be preserved a bit better. Uh, all right, that'll do. That's um, good enough. So here's our world map. Now, there's a ruler here, uh, snap to center, and if I go to object and token, so yeah. Uh, as you can see, my world map is like, I don't know, one side of the continent to the other side of the continent is only 60 feet. Yeah, we should fix this. So, uh, edit. Now, I'm going to make this um, 100 high by... Uh, sorry, 100 wide by 50 high. Um, 7,000 pixels wide, that's fine. I don't have to worry about that. It's the images itself that's the important part. Grid cell distance. Here is a number. This part is you can go, okay, I don't want this in feet. I want it in miles. And each square is going to be uh, 6, 000, uh, 600 miles. No, 60 miles. Yes, there we go. 60 miles. Um, so 6,000 miles for the whole width of the map. Save. Very large. That's fine. Probably get away with it. Uh, you might have to then zoom out a bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, map and background. Uh, oh. Background. Oh, yeah, I was on ruler. And a bit of faff, and suddenly you've got a scale world map. Um, is that about right? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, cool. Now, when we measure things, we've got like a thousand miles or whatever. Boom, done. We now have miles measurements. That's how you can sort out the measurements for different map scales. If you have a city, if you have... Oh, was it meters? Well, I suppose it doesn't really matter. It's just like M. I'm taking that as miles. That's a, that's a bit of a small... Yeah. Um, and you, you, can, you, can change the, you can change the suffix. All right, so let's hide that real quick. And I'm going to swap games into Empire to show you guys... Uh, to show everybody how... Um, oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. How that's all set up. Right, so if I launch this, you get to sneak peek behind the scenes here, and you'll be able to see also the difference in the character sheets. Um, right, so uh, let's go to one of the battle maps I've got. Um... Ah, yeah, let's go to the reactor battle map, actually. That's great. Oh, here's here's also a good a good thing to point out. So, I'm now in Empire. I've dragged the players, this red tab, over to the reactor. I'm still looking at the map. You can put your players in different locations whilst you're, as the, the GM, working on something else, which is really, really handy. Uh, however... It does mean you have to be careful about which thing you're looking at and where your players are looking. So to drag your players around, just drag this um, player's doofer. To move yourself around, click on the on the map. 
So you can see now um, I'm using a using a hex grid, and this is a this is a much bigger map. Um, you know, I didn't mess around with my map sizes because the uh, the movement speeds and the ranges of the weapons in Empire are much greater than they would be in Dungeons and Dragons, for example. Oh yeah, um, and this is this this is in the state it was in when the combat finished. So Finney having just climbed out of um out of the out of the wastewater here. But if we load the token up, you can see how I've got this set up for Finney, name Finney, controlled by character settings. And this is represents character. You can select none slash generic token for just random NPCs that aren't important. Um, and you can you can um, select other character characters here. Uh, these bars here are linked into the character sheet itself. So um, these two, uh, faint and wounds. Bar three, there isn't a uh, fatigue counter in um, in the dark heresy character sheet. So I just used the red bar. Doesn't map to an attribute and it's just their toughness bonus. Um, GM notes if I wanted them here and dynamic lighting. So you can see four meters of night vision so a character can you know sort of feel their way around close in. Vision um, and if I go over to the dynamic lighting overlay you can see where I've added in the the blocks. I did it in blue on this so that it would show up more easily and around the edge here is the um is the edge of this wall um for the for the reactor containment structure um now uh oh yeah my library okay here we go so i've now got like tons and tons of backgrounds tokens and maps organized as best as I'm able. Um, so you can see here, uh, there are some royal, uh, some public domain tokens and stuff. Uh, here's a token for the shuttle that I used on the world map. Some Eldar that they didn't have to, they didn't have to face one-on-one uh, -on -one eventually. Um, and also tons of background stuff because what I did for the background art is I used the, there we go. As I used the this as a map, um, and I just like didn't put any tokens on and just shoved in background art. If you're not running a show, you could just use like photography and stuff um, with a reasonably permissive license. Um, if you're not making any money from the things you're using in a like in a game like this, it's a pretty good fair use argument. Um, for, you know, using a copyrighted piece of um, art to represent something in a personal game. Um, but, to be absolutely sure, always prefer um, public domain or Creative Commons licensed works. Uh, or, as, as, as I did, make it yourself. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was a great, great opportunity for me to do art and things and practice. Fantastic, wonderful. Um, that's what I did for, for that particular part. Now, in terms of keeping track of characters, I have here all of the generic stuff. So I've got Godspeaker, Bandit Heavy, Acrobat, and here we are. You can see, this is Flapping Harry's stat line, by the way. If anyone's ever curious, this this is how this is how he was statted out, um, and I just threw this together as part of my prep. Um, and you can see fellowship, willpower, etc., etc., etc. Great, fantastic. I didn't have to fill out any of this stuff. Um, that's absolutely fine. And we have um, character sheets for important people. Let's pick up Sheila's. Um, there she is. This is uh, Sheila Forsey, who was the prisoner they had. Uh, and this was her stat line, um, as an example. Uh, am I running the commander campaign through this? Yes. 
Um, I I will be running um, Commander through roll twenty. Um, so yeah, that's that's the that's like the basics of how to get to grips with that. Uh, if I if I go if I go to the objects and tokens layer and just pick one of these random, there we are. Pick this. Let's pick this one. Doesn't need vision. It's an NPC. Uh, as you can see, dead. Great. Uh, represents none. Name six. That's just like the um, the initiative order of which one's which. Because I used identical tokens. I needed to know which one's happening when. Um, and that helped me keep stuff organized. So, does anyone have any particular roll 20 questions? Th that that's I think it's like all of the um the major stuff. Uh, whilst whilst everyone thinks of questions to ask me regarding like roll 20 and things, uh, I can briefly show you like oh yeah, let's, let's show you let's show you this ship. Um, two one four seven dash Z uh, as a handout. This one is tagged only to me. Uh, the religion one I can show you guys as well, actually. Uh, Stur, Sov, Missing God, Kilvo, uh, J uh, Jawan Aran. It's a difficult one to pronounce that. I think it's Jawan Iran actually. Uh, Jove, uh, Bosch. Oh yeah, it's got the pronunciations just underneath. Um, and everybody had access to this. So if I edit this, in players' journals, uh, Goldie, me, and all players. Um, and, oh, it shouldn't have been edited by all players, but um, that's the description and notes. Um, so, yeah, uh, be, be sure to have... Uh, be sure to have your permissions set up correctly. Um, and you can use these handouts to um, record quests, uh, locations, information that the characters would know, but the players might not, such as, you know, the religion of, of the planet, um, data slate, governor's info, etc, etc. Super, super handy. Um, oh yeah, that's all GM notes. And this is terms. Oh yeah, and this this was just my my dictionary of stuff I'd said. Um, and this th these ones were for, were for me. Uh, but yeah, that's I think the like the 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 quick intro to roll twenty as a format for gaming with. Um, I'd use Roll20 mostly as a, um, games resolution thing, rather than as a communications tool, if that makes sense. I find Discord or Zoom, even if it does boot me off after 40 minutes, um, as a, as a much, um, more user-friendly and reliable communications means. You can use... The, the comms tools through Roll20, they're not as good as, you know, Discord or whatever. Um, yeah, and actually, yeah, let's, let's open up the floor for any further questions, I think. Um, whilst I take a spy and see who's online, because we'll need to wrap up soon-ish. Um, who's online that I can go and pester? In terms of raid targets and stuff. All right, let's uh, let's do that. Anyone? I'm or generic NPC questions as well. Uh, more than happy to more than happy to elaborate. How much fun did you have making all the maps for the campaign? Ooh, I I loved I loved the um, I loved the map making. I am I am such a map nerd. Also, it's my nine-month anniversary. Woot! Um, yeah, the making making the maps. This particular map I made myself from scratch uh, using Dungeon Draft. I, I mentioned this last uh, last week. Um, check out check out last week's yeah Adventure Tavern sub. It's been nine months since Adventure Tavern has been a thing. Note on maps: you don't need a map for absolutely everything. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, for Empire, I only had maps for combat. For everything else, I used... Um, oh, and... Uh, correction. Combat and the world map, of course. This colossal, colossal world map. Um, there it is. That kept track of all of the locations, and also the sector map. These are more informational... And as, as Nuke says, 100% you don't need... Yeah, the region are more important than counter maps. Yeah, encounter maps are, are, are brilliant if you're playing a system that relies quite a bit on positional stuff for combat resolution. So, um, Dark Heresy is, um, is, is designed for map play. Uh, you know, a lot of enemies or when ranges matter. Yeah. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, I'd argue, is probably one that lends itself well to using a map. Um, something like Powered by the Apocalypse, you don't need a map for that at all. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, why, that's why I had like these flavor images as well, so that I could... Um, economize on the amount of prep I had to do. I have a ton a ton of these um, artworks that I made as as needed and I could refer back to them. Um, so if if we were going to like Marvic, there it is. There's there's the Marvic scenery. And instantly um, everyone's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, we're in like hot and deserty environment and stuff now. Okay, I can't wear all of my armor because I'm going to melt." etc etc. And um, for for me, I find that super useful. You ca you can one hundred percent do everything through the theater of the mind. I find having like a visual prompt like this super useful. For mm, yeah, encounter maps, up to you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Any 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 further questions and stuff? Uh, it seems like that are awesome. I need me some skill in drawing those. <laughs> Literally, Bob Ross, 100%. Everything... Uh, I found some Bob Ross Photoshop brushes. I've got my drawing tablet here, and I was just like, okay, let's prat about with these and draw Arizona. <laughs> you know? Um, as an example, uh, you, can, you can see, like, the, the very... Oh, you can see the evolution of my art style. Like this one here, the ship, the crashed ship, was like the very the second thing I drew using this tablet. Um, and you compare that with like Marvic, and the the difference is telling. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the difference is huge. Um, but uh, having you know, chucking it in once, you can refer back to it. Art is hard, honestly. Yeah, it art. Art isn't difficult, art just takes practice. 100%. Don't be off-put by... Um, uh, don't be off-put by... Others' art. Just grab a pencil or your, your tablet thing. Or if, you, if you've got, like... Um, do I have one handy? If you've got a... If you've got, like, an actual, like, old-school tablet like this, um, load up MS Paint or whatever it is in Apple that you get for drawing with, and sketch stuff out with a stylus. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, equally, don't feel compelled to have to do all of this, too. Tracing, tracing photos for things is fine, do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, in terms of, like grabbing random pictures from the internet I'd, I'd advise always check the license you could probably argue fair use for um personal just like oh yeah we found this just on google image search for a personal game um the moment it hits the internet as a derivative work just steer steer clear of it completely either create it yourself or get public domain stuff 100 percent 
Um, like, I've got literally thousands of pieces of character art I've just saved and collected over the years, just as inspiration and for, like, stuff for personal games. Like, um, I used this piece of character art from... Oh, I think I used, um, like, Commander Shepard ca uh, character art, um, Femshep. Uh, as as like a, a, a an inspiration on a mood board, you know that kind of thing. Um, but but yeah, be be very wary about like copyright stuff. Um, that's why I did all of the art myself. Um, and and uh, other public domain stuff. The only the only one I didn't do, just to just to wrap up. Um, and this 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 covers like world building slash games. There we are, Battle Valley. There we are. This one is a screen grab from the public domain video that's in the Empire trailer. I then threw it through a Photoshop filter, um, and this was the location of the previous, you know, planetary victory. You know, it was in the trailer the whole time. <laughs> I bet you didn't realize that. Um, but but yeah. So, um, we're going to wrap up. Uh, I think. Let's see how far in they are. Ooh, yeah, that, this is perfect. All right. Um, I think if you want to... If you want... If you want to... Nope. Carrying on from the Games Master stuff... If you want to learn from a very talented games master, by example, Domestic Dan is currently um, running his game on ta uh, Table Story, so we're going to raid in there, I think. You are most welcome. Any additional questions and things, feel free to pester us in Discord. Uh, pop it in the general channel. Um, don't at us, just like pop it in. Um, and someone will answer because you know we we enjoy this. <laughs> we like nerding out. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you again. Thank you also local snack preferences and Stacy the Linguist for popping on today, um, as as they were available. We um, I was hoping to have a couple of other people on as well, but life got in the way for them, unfortunately. Um, so um, I hope they find this useful as well. And uh, yeah, have an adventurous, have an adventurous uh, rest of uh, rest of Sunday and week. Uh, we're gonna aim his computer F. <laughs> right. Um, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna raid into Table Story. So here's some. Is it raid text? I can never remember. Oh yeah, it is raid text, and then there's sub raid, isn't it? Boop. Grab those. Uh, we're gonna do the do the raids and things. Um, uh, domestic Dan. Uh, so you so everybody can check out um, that show. You can see how he does his games mastering by example. Um, pick up tips, notes, that kind of thing. Um, we're not planning a show next week. Uh, I'm taking the week off. I'm going to go visit my family. <laughs> um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we should have some exciting, cool stuff to show everybody within the next couple of weeks. So please do stay tuned for those. And uh, yeah, have a pleasant. All right, I'm going to go to the ending screen. Uh, have an adventurous week, everybody, and uh, take care.